Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time it might be where you are out there. Now, why didn't that play? Why didn't that? I know why that didn't play. I know why that Greetings, didn't play. My excellent there it is. It's so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today, today is June 3rd, 2021. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How we doing there, chat room? Let me bring up the chat room. Let's say hello. They're there. They're right over there. Oh, my goodness. Look at the folks. Already in the chat room, Nitro Evil is here. Welsh Ronaldo, good morning to you. G Return, hey yo, good to see you. Ancient Coder, happy Thursday to you. DJ Squared, how's it going there, friends? I just heard a hello. Kevin Griffin is here. There he is. Hey, Kevin. He's a member of the Live Coders team. Good to see you. Semaphore 2, good morning. Nexio TLG, hello, hello. Jason is here. Greetings. You're here to see the beard? It's a normal beard today. We're back to normal. We were rainbow the other day. Thanks to our friends con contributing to our St. Jude fundraiser. We raised more than $11,000 for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital here on stream. And we're going to continue that this month. All of our subscribers, all of our cheers that come in, we're donating to St. Jude all month long. Um, and we'll make that donation probably July 15th. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for your support. Mr. Ben... Good to see you. Good morning. Uh, R-A-V-N. Hello. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Justin Horner. Hello. Welcome in. How you doing there? This is a big day. I've been, uh, some of you have seen, I've been struggling a bit with error logging and how we should do this this better and, and, and what I do with error logs, right? There's something about, okay, after you, after you get through exception tracing and, and configuring all that in your code, what do you do with it? Where do, where do these things go? And and there's you, you don't want all the noise around you, right? You don't want to have all this stuff floating around. You want to be able to get some analysis on this stuff. And and um, I was talking to Ava from Rollbar about this, and she said, you got to talk to my colleague, Nico. He's got tremendous insights in this. 
He's going to be able to help you out. So I said, well, let's let's have Nico on the on the stream and let's go through this. I am not doing an impression of Scott Guthrie. But I want to make sure we bring in Nico here. I've got Nico in Skype. Let me let me bring him in. He's uh he's right over here. So um come on. Here comes the scene. I know this takes so long. I need to shorten this. There's Nico. Hey, welcome in, Nico. Good to see you. Good morning. Good afternoon to wherever people are and to you, Jeff. Yeah. How's it going today? Not bad. And let me tell you, the first time that I realized there's people watching from Europe and Africa and Australia as we're broadcasting, I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. We can go to the Aussies. We can say good day. Good day to the Aussies. There we go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Jason says Nico, Nico, and and uh, Jason work in the same office. It looks like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> a beautiful office. Love the view. Love the view. Um, so we were talking about Rollbar and how how your product does so much for error logging, not just error logging, but there's analysis tracking and source. Source analysis that we can do on this. Can you talk a little bit about what Rollbar offers here and what we can get out of this? Right. I mean, so let, let me give you a bit of background about myself and actually how I got to be at Rollbar, which is which is interesting in itself because I spent most of my career started in you know writing software, you know in .NET back in the ASP classic ASP days, VB6 days, and, and graduated to .NET and, and now .NET Core. You know, and throughout that time, spent a lot of time just, you know, if there's an error, what do you do? If there's logs, you debug, you know, and you thought that's life, that's how it works. And, and frankly, you know, in the early days, you, you didn't have much of a choice, right? You were writing the stuff out to a database or a log file somewhere and, you know, go grab a cup of coffee, a cup of sandwiches. And then we start to pass through these logs, right? And we, yeah. we hopefully get some sense of where something happened and, and we, we fix it and, you know, I think that was life for a lot of people. And, you know, the good news is, is as I started working more and things started to move to the cloud and, and things just became easier, you know, there's, there's got to be a better way to do this, frankly, because, you know, just the sheer amount of time, I think, Jeff, you've probably had it, right? Just, you know, the logs just get bigger and bigger and, and it's not getting easier if you find a problem. Right. The, the number of times I, I wrote a, a text parser to look at IIS logs, right, it, and split on the tabs, so that I could figure out and load it into an Excel sheet. Come on now. Yeah, and I think what we've seen then in, in my career is, is I've worked with a lot of tools companies and we did a lot of product stuff and I've seen this problem in everywhere. So it doesn't matter you know, if you're writing medical device software for cars, for planes, if you're writing just website stuff or internal apps, honestly, it doesn't matter. The problem's the same, right? To get to this data really is the same. So, you know, when I got the opportunity to just you know look at Rollbar and they said, Hey, come and join us, I was like, hold on a second, this seems like it actually solves a real problem, right? Because one of the things sometimes you look at some of these these products and you go, I don't think I know the problem it's solving, which mm. is a real, real problem, right? But what I got from Rollbar is, you know, and, and if you look at the founders and maybe I should just share so I give you some background into the viewers of what actually Rollbar is, that might be useful. Let me just do that. Okay. So let's here so let's see if i can do this correctly jeff i'm gonna have to we're gonna have to guide and let's see so, how we go here's the fun chat room we're gonna do a screen share and then i'm gonna put that up on the screen here for us and yeah there we go there look we at go. that look at that it's like we've done oh, this before it's like, like we've done this before beautiful, beautiful. so so the, the two founders, Brian and Corey, which you see in the little picture at the bottom there, so the, the engineers, right, they, they work together um, at various organizations and they had this problem where, just as we described, Jeff, I mean, just to find things, to get, to get notified, honestly, to just get visibility into an error in the first place, often is harder, right? And sometimes you wait for your customer, which is even worse, right? You, you have to wait for somebody to tell you that, you know what, I couldn't sign up, I couldn't do something, you know, it, it's just hard. And, and for those of you hopefully watching today, you, you probably use some of the apps already, you know, if you're ordering food, a taxi, you're doing things in your daily life, those applications, those sites, those APIs, they're using Rollbar, right? So you probably have interacted with around the 40,000 apps we're already in today. So that's, that's quite nice. And one of the unique things Rollbar does is 
it's processed over 100 billion errors. So what we actually do in the back end is we have AI and machine learning that actually look at these stack traces and we can go figure out what is unique about this thing so we can actually make your life, instead of having a million log items, you know, have two or three errors with lots of... Ooh. 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 Oh. There, there we go. Here we go, we're back. Hi. Okay, that was my good face when we... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to give you some sense of what, you know, probably tools you've used today, what, what people use Rollbox for, and, and, you know, salespeople always and, and marketing people love to put up a logo. They look good, right? Everybody loves them, clapping hands. But what are the real problems that, that some of us is solving? And, and so if you look at Twilio, you know, for them, they don't want their customers to find a bug. Right. Oh, for if sure. If you look at Rollbar's motto, is it's it's being proactive, right, Jeff? It's it's like, can we actually get this item, know about it before our customer knows of it? Can we actually fix it potentially before, you know, they actually see that there's a problem? Mm. Right. So that's that's really nice. And again, Circle CI, they have a great customer story with us. But these are, are real engineers that have solved this this very problem. So it might be worth if people want to know what the problem is to go look at that. But here we go, let's get to the meat of this. So what's the actual problem that Rollbar solves? So as you mentioned, Jeff, I mean, it, there's a ton of noise, right? So we write stuff yeah. out to logs yeah. today. I mean, if you've got a million people hitting Twitch or your website, right, you're gonna have a million bugs, but it might be the same actual error, right? right? Uh, and and so we, we're putting this stuff in logs, we, we've got APM tools, but you know, to, to look at this information, to search through it, it's just hard. And so what Rollbar actually does is it, it can take the stuff in real time, group it together, so you can know within one to three seconds of a problem, and you can actually do something about it. Because we, we group them together, if there's a million of the same error, you know, a million occurrences, you'll still get one notification. You can have one automatic rollback. You know, okay, turn it okay. To flag or, so that is really nice. I mean, it really helps solve and cut through the noise. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It, right. And and I when I'm thinking of things that are happening on Clip Talk, where we're loading so many records. Thank you for H the resub. Bisuch just resubscribed for 27 months. I didn't want that turned on today, but that's okay. Thank you so much for the resub. And I'll make another donation. I'm going to turn that off for while we're talking to Nico here. Go ahead. Yep. So, I mean, once you can get these these unique errors, you can do something about them. And also, just honestly, one of the big problems is just finding them, filtering. Just show me errors. Just I don't want to know about warnings or some log information. I just want to find specific errors. And the other thing, Jeff, we've seen a lot of is people are moving to microservices, which is great. Mm. That actually makes error tracking rather hard. Yeah. Right. Because there's a whole path there that data is flowing through, and and and. Thinking about how things happen in Clip Talk, when when we detect a new clip, well, it comes into an ingestion function that that discovered them, and then it puts a message on a service bus, and all these other little services wake up and go and act on it. So tracking that transaction, that's a pretty hard thing to follow. Absolutely. I mean, I, I worked with another company about a couple of weeks ago, and. and you know, that was the exact problem they had. They said, look, it's great. We're moving to microservices. We're deploying lots of times a day. Life is great. And then we got errors and we're like, I don't know how many of the other microservices were affected, mm. what caused it. So is it, I mean, there's got to be a way that I say, look, this is the, the, the transaction. And then how did it flow through all these microservices? Which one broke because of an upstream service that sent it bad data or, or whatever the case might be? And frankly, that's just hard because imagine all the different logs to every service you have to go through. You have to put them in something to search on them. So, so Rollbar can solve that, right? We, we have a thing called RQL. So if you love SQL, who doesn't? Oh, yeah. Like we love some queries in the morning, right? So you can write some RQL and you can go find something based on a transaction ID across all your microservices. So you can actually see sort of the, the, the stream of how it went through its life cycle and all the things it broke potentially, right? Sure, Which is makes sense. Very, very, very useful indeed. All oh right. my gosh, yes. So how do we actually do this? So so how do we get it into an app? And so hopefully we'll do some of this today. Yeah, yeah. It should be fun, nothing like some live coding, right? Lots in the morning. of it. 
Exactly. So, so the way Rollbot does this is we are in your code. So a, a lot of tools today would have things that you install on the environment that look from the outside in. So we really focus on the code. So for us, code is, is king. It is the number one thing, and, and we are inside of the application. So if you're doing .NET, um, and we've got a, a SDK coming out for Blazor soon, which I'm super excited about. Oh my gosh. I wrote my first Blazor app, so that's beautiful. But you know, most companies today have a variety of things, right? Mm. So you have some JavaScript, some Python. It doesn't really matter, React Native, React JS. You know, we've got SDKs for all of these. And so once you put Rollbot in them, we'll then start to collect this data in real time. So imagine you've got a service that's up, that's running, somebody hits a problem, we'll know about it within one to three seconds, and we can actually then also do something about it in real time. So that could be rollback and release, like I said, create a Jira ticket, uh, create a GitHub issue, yeah. or uh, using something like feature flags, you can turn them on or off. So okay. you could actually okay. be very proactive in how you make your apps more stable so, and how you make them work all the time. So let me ask you about, about some of these integrations because this this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where I, I, as the software developer, as the application maintainer, I want to I, I want to learn more here. And and I find it interesting that you have the mobile the, the the mobile apps down there. You have Apple and Android. What happens on on a mobile app, right? Is it because I'm planning on taking ClipTalk and turning it into a mobile app? What happens if 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 I've got it deployed as an iPhone app? Errors fire. What does Rollbar do with that data? Does it send it off to the Rollbar servers? Absolutely. So if uh, even if you use an Android, so if you're building for iOS, sure. uh, we're actually working on a Flutter SDK, which should be out very very soon. A lot mm -hmm. of people are going to Flutter as well. Uh, but whatever tech you're using to build these these mobile apps, that's absolutely fine. So we'll be in the, the mobile app just like you're in the front end for a React app or a Blazor app or, or whatever it is. And as soon as something happens that is causing either you know an exception, and that could okay. be handled or unhandled. Some people do a nice job of handling exceptions. You know, bravo. You know, we all want to aspire to be like that. But sometimes, you know, it's unhandled. Something crashes. So we'll capture both of those instances, right? Okay. Okay. So if you just want to start out and say, look, I I, I need to just have anything that's breaking, just get it to me. You know, if you put roll by and instantly, it's just going to grab all that data for you, even on a mobile app, on a web app, right? It's just going to get it to you quickly. Okay. Yeah. And that could also thing if you look up, if your app crashes on startup, right? That might be something you want to know about, right? Yeah. Because it may not even get to your logs, it may not even get to your service. A roll bar can capture some of that information and send it to you and let you know that, yeah, you probably need to do an update because people can't actually use your service or the app whatever it is you're building. Now, it, you also mentioned some of the, about GitHub integrations. Now, I, I love the idea of, of raising an issue in GitHub. Are there, are there other things you can do besides that? I mean, can we, can we like hook into the, into project planner or something with code? It is, what else can you do with GitHub? I mean, I feel like raising an issue is, is kind of like table stakes. Everybody should be able to raise an issue from an error, right? Exactly. I mean, the, the key thing is, uh, for us, it's debugging, right? So sure. if you find an error, what's nice, I'm in Visual Studio, I'm doing my debug, I've got the stack trace, I've got my variables, I've got everything to actually fix this problem. Sure. When you're deploying to production, that luxury goes away, yeah. right? So, you know, what Rollbar gives you, it gives you that luxury back. You'll get okay. the full stack trace, you'll get the variables. So if, if I'm getting that error in something like Rollbar, and I look at it, I can actually see the line of code and I can pull in the last GitHub commit. So I can actually see ah. who made the change. I can look at the Git blame, right? We can okay. fix that problem and then we can commit again and we can actually tell Rollbar that, hey, we actually just did a deploy. And so one of the other great things, imagine if you're deploying 100 times a day, which deploy caused the problem? Is there, you know, how are we, are we actually getting better with our code quality? And that's something that's a byproduct of what Rollbar actually gives you is the fact that will start to show you how you're getting better or not with your code quality, right? So every release, you'll start to get visibility into that, which is really nice, especially if you want to say, hey, let's deploy a lot, but let's make sure the quality is actually moving in the right direction as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Hi, Tindris here in, in chat says, bottlenecks seem to be their biggest issue. 10 minutes in, into working, you find too many, too many things, too many errors start popping up. 
my gosh. And it, it sounds like your, fo- your team has this solved. Exactly. I mean, what we do internally is we eat our own dog food. We love it, right? So if you go okay. to rollabar.com right now, it's running it. So uh, we're actually deploying some updates in the coming week. week we're doing everything by feature flags, right? So if uh, you get a certain threshold of errors, we will just turn off that feature flag. Okay. Right? So you're back to the happy path, which we know is working. But, you know, if you're using something like uh, containers, you've got Terraform, we have a Terraform provider. So I could actually script this stuff to say, no, no, roll back that container, right? Mm. Or do something smart for me. So, you know, if you look at some of, uh, you know, the, the larger companies that have a lot of these uh, services, you probably see a couple of them on our website. That's what they do, right? They, it's just always up. And if you, you know, refresh, you don't see any difference. But what's happened in the background is, you know, they know there was a problem and they've rolled back or they've turned the feature flag on or off. Okay. So that's very, very common. And that's a sort of automation. You're right, Jeff. You know, errors, we can track them. We put in something great. You know, we create a GitHub issue, great. But let's start to do things about it. Yeah. Like, let's start to get a bit more proactive about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm feeling it. You're feeling it? Good. Yeah. So we know about ecosystems, right? So this, I, I, I didn't take all the logos out there today. There's a lot of tools, right? And mm. probably like most of people watching today, it's just every day there's a new tool. And really what we're trying to say is it's important that we work and play nicely with others, right? The last thing you want is to, to use something that doesn't work with whatever your infrastructure is, whatever you're being told to use or, or whatever your preferences are, right? So so Rollbus is very open, uh, open API, We've got web hooks if we don't have a native integration. So if you need to hook up to anything else in your pipeline, it's not the end of the world. It's pretty easy to do. It's probably going to be out of a out of a box, right? So if you think of an error happens, get a Microsoft Teams notification or get a Slack notification. You can set that up out of a box, right? If it doesn't exist, just use a web hook and push it into whatever system you're using. But yeah. you know, yeah. it's very important to live and play nicely with others. Yeah, and I, I feel like when when we do end up building those little web hooks to drop a message into Discord or Slack or Teams, I, I feel like we end up maintaining this 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 bird's nest of yeah. homegrown code. That okay, when I when I'm ready to shift, you know what? We're not going to use Slack anymore. We're going to use Teams. Now I've got to go and rewrite all those integrations and things, but it's all there. In, yeah. in the roll bar tools. Exactly, so the, you don't have to maintain anything extra, which is always nice, right? Less scripts, actually write some code. Yeah. Uh, let's do the stuff we like doing, right? And hopefully not have too many errors to fix, but let's do the things we actually wanna do. Exactly. Uh, I'm a subject uh, matter expert in, in building and writing .NET code to build websites. I don't want to be maintaining things that integrate into the, the team management app of the week. Exactly. Um, but again, it's, it's like I always say, you've got to play nicely with others. It's just one of those things. So I would love to get into some code as well. I don't want to chat all that. Yeah, long. absolutely. But let's do this. Let's show you how we actually get started with this. So I'll show you quickly the base configuration, right? So um, when you look at Rollbar, at a core level, this is pretty much all we need to set up, for example, in an HTML page with some JavaScript to log an error to Rollbar, right? We can automatically instrument it, tell it to get the uncaught exceptions, unhandled rejections, we can capture or not. And then we can send it some payload information. And, and you know, Jeff, we spoke about the like the GitHub integration to see my source code. Yeah. What's important is you'll see there's a bottom of that JSON, it sort of says server, host, root, branch. Okay. You've got to have those so that we know the path and we know what branch to look at. And then we can actually get the code, um, you know, and look at your GitHub code inside of Rollbar. Okay. So it's pretty easy configuration uh, to get going with Rollbar, but that's pretty much it. And then you're off to the races. Mm, okay. So I put this down inside my application somewhere that the configuration can see it. It'll get deployed with it. Um, okay, environment code version. I'm guessing those we can update on the fly with our GitHub action as we're deploying. Uh, yep. Capture username and email. It feels like for that's going to be uh, dependent on each application where and how you capture that information. That's right. So okay. a lot of people want to, uh, a lot of people want to capture, for example, the, um, you know, how many of my customers were affected by this error. Yeah. So one of the things you could do is, is, you know, hook up to the standard browser, you know, if you're storing the username somewhere, 
of course, we comply to things like GDPR, and, and if there's sensitive information, you can actually scrub it. So the okay. payload, and I'll show you how to do that. I've got an example of that. You can actually scrub the payload uh, back over uh, to Rollbar. So if it's stuff you don't want to send, it won't even get to us. Fantastic. Oh, my gosh, yes. Uh, the, 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 the persistence and the way that GDPR has invaded everything that we as developers do. Anytime you're working with a user, there's a GDPR concern, right? And for those of you out there watching, haven't seen, you haven't run into GDPR, right? That's the European privacy legislation where you you have to obey and, and clean out data and you need to properly allow folks to um, be forgotten. They're allowed to request that, hey, yeah. website, you if you're deleting my information, if I'm no longer using you, forget me, remove all my information. So to have... Have that information in your logs about who the users are is kind of tricky. It's a pain then to yeah. do that forget and have to go through all your logs and remove Skippy from wherever doesn't want to be there and you have to clean your logs. That's a pain. Exactly. So what, one of the things, tips and tricks there, one of the things I've seen people do is if you store the users just somewhere sentry, which is where the GDPR compliance is, you know, in the Rollbar People API, you can just say, this is the, the person's UUID in my system or whatever it is, that at least, you know, you don't have to store any of that stuff anywhere else. It's just in one place. And then you can still query it and look it up in Rollbar, right? Yeah, so you can still there we go. It nice and safe, right? I've, on, on another system that I was looking at, I saw folks would hash the, the user ID, right? So the, the C Sharp Fritz, they would hash C Sharp Fritz. So it isn't storing C Sharp Fritz in the logs or wherever. It's just that hash. Well, when that, when that hash disappears from the user database, it's got nothing to join back to, to identify that user. So effectively it's forgotten it, but that hash is still around and we can still use that to uniquely identify that there was a user here, but we don't know who it was. Yeah. And one of the examples, I, I spoke to a company, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, and they do, uh, in a, you know, you sign up for a loan and you can apply, like I said, sure. they move to microservices and they wanted to track the things across microservices. But one of the things they wanted to know is when we have an error in our system, how many people were actually impacted, meaning they couldn't sign up to our service that we can maybe go back to and say, well, mm. we fixed it. You can be proactive and say, look, we fixed it. Try again. Because they have no visibility into that, right? And, yeah. and that was actually an interesting use because I thought that's being quite proactive from their perspective, right? Actually saying, hey, we know about you and let's help you out and, and you know send you a notification to sign up again or, or whatever the case might be. Yeah, it's there was an outage. We're ready to, to help you again. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Let's look at some code. Yeah, okay. let's do it. All right. So I've got a .NET application, .NET Core over here. Um, this is not my Blazor one, just standard .NET Core. Okay. So I've got two things here. I've got a, a bunch of controllers for the API, and then I've got some standard HTML from the front end with JavaScript. And, and the reason for that is I want to show two things. I want to show you know how you track errors in the front end, right, and how you happen to track them in the back end, which typically is some sort of API, right? That could do, be rest or whatever it is. Do me a favor before you get any further. Let's uh, zoom in that that font a little bit so that we can see that. And I think you can also close your toolbox on the left so we can get a little bit more space there. A little bit more, if you don't mind. Always. We almost have to over compromise, over compensate when we're looking at code because it, there's actually it, there's actually a lot of folks out there that are watching on their mobile phone. So we want to make sure they can see the code. There we go. Okay. Let's back out of the smaller. All right. So this is the startup.cs file. So for those yeah. of you who um, can't see that at the top, there it is. So what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a couple of rollbar packages. So you can go to Nougat, go and grab these. They, they, they're on there. So you can certainly go and, and pull these into your project. Okay. Right. And once you have them in there, what we need to do is we only need to do a couple of setup things over here. So if you look at configure services, mm -hmm. which is uh, the first area we want to get into, I want to go down over here, and this is what I want to do is I want to actually configure Rollbar, and one of the things we can do, uh, you know, for Rollbar is actually tell it what level of data should be in Rollbar, right? I, I you know, sometimes yes. you want to get everything, sometimes you don't want to get all the info logs, you don't really care. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think Jeff you mentioned is is um, in a previous chat as well. If you're, I'm in debug mode versus production mode or deployed mode. What's my comfort level, right? How much information do I want? Yeah. 
if I'm if I'm in production, I don't want to be logging the information and debug tracing information that I put in while I'm developing. The the ability to set this log level filter is it, it it's a simple feature, but it's huge to reduce the, the initial level of chatter that I'm generating. Yeah, just the just the amount of noise. You know, I've I've typically I've got a, a another app where I was just writing logs to a database and you know, you're looking at 10 million logs and it's like, oh dear, oh dear. What was the date timestamp? So that, that's no fun for anybody. And then what ends up happening is nobody looks at it because I'll just wait till somebody tells me there's a problem, right? So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stop looking at it, which is not ideal. Right. I want my logs to help me manage by exception, not by rule. So when I see error logs generated, that's and, and that should be a rare occurrence versus there's always hundreds of megabytes of logs. And, and that's something that I absolutely, I, I ran into with ClipTalk where, it, because I had log information and log debug and log error sitting well, there, some value. It, it logged everything. Thank you, thank you for the cheer, appreciate that. I thought I turned those off and it's still coming through. Um, and I'll make another donation to St. Jude for that cheer. Thank you so much. Well, that's a great charity, by, by the way. It's just, uh, thank you. they do a back up job, really do. Not a problem. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know where it's coming in from. It's not supposed to be here. Um, I've got, yeah, those alerts removed. Um, okay, all right. So can, that that feels like, right, this is typical ASP.NET Core. As, as an ASP.NET Core web developer, this is kind of where we expect to see the configuration, and it looks very straightforward. I, I, you've got everything Correct. wrapped up nice and easy with, with one line command, add roll bar. Add yeah. rollbar logger. So if you pop over to the configure part over here, so just go to the bottom here. I do want to add in this example, I'm actually using the rollbar middleware. So you know, there's other options. We've got multiple options for .NET projects. Um, so this is one option. There's another option where you're hooking to to iLogger as well. Um, so you know, I'm just going to use this option for mine, and I'll show you the JavaScript one. So once I've configured, this is just you know over here where I'm setting my token. So for Rollbar, so when you sign up to Rollbar, you'll set up your first project and you'll you'll pick you know what sort of project is it front end, back end, and then once you do that, you'll get a token, right? So actually, let's go ahead and do something like that. So let's actually set up a a, a new project over here, and I can show you guys what that's gonna. We'll just go sample project over here, right? So when I create that project, okay. you know what's gonna happen over here is it's gonna give me some options, right? So that's actually during this process where I actually get my token from. So mm. that's the token I'm going to need to put in either the front end and back end code. So how it works is if you're in like the, the, the .NET Core API, that's considered a back end item. Sure. Right? JavaScript is considered front end. So the tokens are different uh, for those different uh, you know, types. So again, if you're using something like a, a mobile app, you, you can find you know, all the different mm. DKs for those. The front end ones you've got over here, uh, you've got your back end ones as well. And again, it, it depends on the technology you're using, but we even have one for Salesforce. So if you have people writing Salesforce Apex code, you can actually put it into Salesforce, right? If you want to get those logs, which is just an interesting use case, right? It, it might be, you know, a built system, but you can still put code into it. Okay. Uh, so if you want to track the errors, you can do that. Okay. So once I pick, for example, .NET and I hit continue, what you'll get is you'll get that token over here and, and it'll show you uh, one of the basic options to configure it, right? I've got a more advanced example, but this is the basic setup. So you can see how easy that is. You, you basically copy the code across and you're ready to run. All okay. right, all right. Pretty easy to do. Now, that yep. there's, a, there's a question just came up from Fubar Hassan in chat uh, that uh, makes sense here. It's a good question to ask. Um, Hassan asks, oh, let me move the chat, oh, the featured chat over just a smidge so we can see that. There we go. I thought I had this aligned in the middle. There it is. So when we're allocating, we'll want to create separate projects for front end and back end, our JavaScript and our .NET. Uh, Perfect. Project. So let me tell you the, the rule of thumb. So a rollbar project is the same as a GitHub repo. So oh. put your thinking that way. Why, you might ask? If I want to link up my code context, so when I get the error and I want to go to GitHub and go pull in that code to see the code context, 
is so one rollbar project needs to link to a single GitHub repo. So if like my project uh, in Visual Studio, it's all in one thing, so front end, API, everything just in one, it's one GitHub repo. But if a front end is a separate repo, back end is a separate repo, then absolutely two rollbar projects. Okay. So, but I would need to, I would generate two different keys, one for the, right. for the okay, now I got it. Yeah. So each project would have uh, different keys and that's a good way if you also want to turn keys on or off, uh, maybe for the backend project mm. or you want to, you know, you can also rate limit. So sometimes you want to send more, sometimes you want to send less. Uh, so you can actually rate limit our tokens as well. Um, so again, that's a good way if you split them out to, to change those limits for the different tokens. Okay, makes sense. So, so, so some things to keep in mind when you do that, right? Um, so then what we want to do, again, like the JavaScript example, I want to set some of my server config, like the host, my, my path here on Windows, and then what my yeah. GitHub branch is okay. uh, that I'm looking at. Again, I do that so that my code context can work. So, so you're specifying the local folder on the machine you're developing on. Is that so that while you're in development mode, you get relative references yes. here. So it, it, just digging into that a little bit further, when I'm working on a team, that that path is, should be relative to where my application resides, right? On And that might be different on, on your machine versus my machine when we're sharing code. So do you recommend folks, instead of hard coding it like that, it, write some sort of a, a little bit of code that'll look up the location of Absolutely. where it sits? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, you definitely want to do that. Um, and what I've seen some big organizations, they sort of force you to use the same path, which is great, but that's not reality. We all no. put things in different places. So yes, you want to have either a variable that picks up where the environment's running from, so you can just replace that in there. That's that's the best practice. Um, but again, you've got to have that in there. Otherwise, what will happen is you'll open up the area, you'll see the stack trace, which is great, but I won't see the actual code context, which is really what we want, right? We want okay. some more detail to actually solve this thing quickly. Okay. Okay. So, so that's on the the back end side. That's my API. But what do I do in the front end? So I've got a basic uh, HTML page over here, which is really just using Bootstrap. So nothing fancy. You know, uh, what I want to do is again, I want to set up Rollbar. So again, there's my config. And again, you, you do have some more options as well. So for example, do I want to capture username, emails? Again, what you will see, what I do in some of my examples, I actually put those in from because when somebody logs on, it's a different user, different stored credentials. Mm. So I can pick, you know, from a variable or maybe local storage or session storage to pull that in so I have the right information, right? So that's something you definitely do as well. Okay. Then one of the other things that's quite interesting, and let's actually run this so I can show you a bit of, of what will actually happen in practice. So let's fire this up. and Let's actually go to my other project. All right. So we got no errors right now. So life is happy. Life is great. Yeah. Okay. So there's the application over here, which is called Gray Duck. Okay. Because you can, why not? We're in, I live in Minnesota now. So Duck Duck, Gray Duck, I believe is the game they play my kids. <laughs> That's why I picked the name. So there you go. So let's go ahead and I want to get to a login page. So the first one um, that I want to do over here is, you know, a bit of a real life example. But sometimes you see, you know, people show you a demo of a product and it's not really real life. It's, you know, that's not how it works in practice. So I wrote this, which is something hopefully which people have seen. So imagine you've got a customer, they, they use your application trying to log in or sign up or yeah. whatever they're trying to do with your app. And they go through the process, they hit the button and something is actually happening in the back end where it's failing, right? But the actual user may get something like this, where he says, hey, we just had a, a problem or thing, you know, the app didn't crash. You know, we, we handled, handled it. We yeah. We did as developers, we actually did a good job here. Are they going to log a support ticket to tell me? Probably not. How am I going to know about this problem? And what would have happened in real time, you probably saw it in the background, is that error actually already came in within one second, one to three seconds. It's in rollbar. Okay. So that okay. I know that this can happen very quickly, right? So this is, you can see with the icon, a .NET error. So let's go into that one. So if we look at the item over here, what's really nice about it is if I expand that, this is actually pulling from my GitHub repo. Can you so, can you zoom in a little bit there so so we can see that code? Yeah, just the control plus. There we go. Yeah. All right. Now, yeah. 
Okay. Okay. You've got a connection you're trying to open. And it, it also, all right. So I see that it's NPG SQL. It's trying to connect to a Postgres database. Right. Okay. Perfect. So we have some problem uh, there, right? So how do we actually know where it happened? So we know that the exception ha ha happened while connecting, right? So if we go down, we actually know what line of the actual code caused the error. It'll give it to us, right? And, you know, I sort of know what the problem is, but let's say I didn't know I'm trying to fix this error. So there you can see the actual problem, right? So my machine is refusing a connection. So that could only mean a couple of things, right? I've already narrowed it down. That's the exception you would have received if you're in Visual Studio. Sure. Postgres was down, or I didn't have the right authentication details or whatever the case might be. Okay. Okay. So let's go into that occurrence. So remember this error happens potentially many times. So as Ooh. I was doing this last night, you can see there, I was running through this a couple of times, but this single error happened many times. So what's nice about Rollbar, if we take a step back, I just have one exception over here, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Just one, but I know that it's happened many times. So imagine the noise that's just been removed mm -hmm. from my line. That is a lot of lot of noise that's all of a sudden just gone. Okay, let's go back into that error again, and let's go to the occurrence, right? So the occurrence is how many times it's happened. So I'm gonna go to the latest yeah. one, which just happened. So right, we'll see the code context again. We'll see all the details. And if you scroll to the bottom, what Rollbar would have received from your application is you'll know the framework you're using, right? Okay. You'll know a lot more information that you're typically used to when you're actually writing some code in Visual Studio or in any IDE that you like, right? So I know some of the data that we've removed. So we'll actually tell you some of the data we're scrubbing. So that could be a social, it could be ID number or any type of data you don't want to send to Rollbar, right? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. If I scroll down, you'll see a lot more information there. And then I get the raw JSON. So if you ever wanted to see, well, what was the package that Rollbar actually received from your app, you can scroll down. And if I go down a bit more, it's a pretty beefy package, which is really nice. I will actually see the full exception at the bottom here. So if we scroll down, there we go. There's the actual exception plus the class, plus the line of code that actually caused the problem. So we get the full the, the full stack traces output here for us. It's in JSON format, so we can search through it and see everything. Very verbose. Okay. Very, very, very. Yeah, it is. Sometimes you go, that is a lot of information. But when you're debugging something and you want to get to it quickly, yeah. more is probably better. Yeah. Right? You know, you you don't want less. So let's actually do <laughs> some... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to point out here, our friend in chat, uh, Hytindris, points out that IIS... Um, uh, that IIS user permission management, yes, right? Having to manage the, the interactions of those users and getting that permission right is such a pain in the neck. And I feel like that's something that we'd be able to to lock down and, and not, lock down is the wrong word. We'd be able to, to focus and, and zoom in on quickly that, oh, this is misconfigured with this type of error tracking coming through. Okay. So let's do something else. Let's say we do a bit of a front end error, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go to the register page and, and we'll, we'll do something like this. So in this example, so the back end will be working, but we'll have a front end problem. So okay. again, I actually did the right thing in my app. It actually shows me an error. An error handling. Right. Yeah. But one of the things you could also do in the back end as well as front end is we actually will generate for every unique error occurrence a UUID. So okay. you could actually have, you know, if I show a message like this on screen and somebody wants to log a ticket, if they put this in here as a developer, I would actually get the exact occurrence just by clicking on it. So for example, if I just copy this link and go over here to my browser and I paste it, you can see that over here, it'll take me to the exact error in JavaScript with the problem that variable is, is not defined. I'll also get the telemetry, right? So I will actually know the form, the sequence of what went down and where actually the problem occurred, right? So we know that this variable is not there. Now, this is this information is publicly visible? Uh, so that information on... So when you say publicly, no. Okay. You've got to have a Rollbar account. Okay. So, if, you know, typically what you want to give people is, hey, if you're logging a support ticket or if you, for example, with us, we use Zendesk, 
If you create a Zendesk ticket, put it in the ticket. So as a developer, when you receive it from support, you can just go copy the UID, put it into Rollbar, and we'll show you the exact area. You don't have to go search. There's no more searching. Okay, okay. Um, I'm feeling that. All right. So a bit of a difference there. So you can see a front-end error versus a back-end error. The nice thing is I get a total view in one place of everything that's going on, right? Mm -hmm. So I can mm -hmm. see my back-end errors. I can see the front-end errors. I could see mobile items coming in. So I could really get a, a pretty good picture of, of what's going on. The other thing I can do is, you know, I could go ahead and assign this to somebody. So I'm just going to assign it to me there, assign this to another bloke over there. And again, I can in either mute something if I'm getting too, too many of these requests. Say, look, we're on it. We're busy with it. Don't worry about it. Um, the other thing we'll do here is let's actually go and maybe see if we can, you know, fix one of these errors, right? So let's do one more. So if you bear with me, Jeff, we'll do sure. one more error and we'll actually fix it. So it'll be an easy one. So there we've got our, our API in the back. Um, oh, look at that. Love seeing the Swagger UI. Trying to be a better person by developing nice things that are easy to use for people. Because, you know, <laughs> what irritates me more than anything is somebody gives you an API and the documentation makes me want to cry. Um, it mm -hmm. honestly does not. So I'm trying to be a good citizen here. So let's hit the button. <laughs> and what we should be getting is in Visual Studio, we've got an exception, right? As what expected. I'm yeah. To happen as well is. And it's already in Rollbar, so that was pretty quick. <laughs> you know, it's it's that that real time. So we'll see that we just got a, you know, a very very basic error over here. But again, there's the line of code that broke. Okay. You can see the line of code that broke it. But that's the sort of context that'll make your life easier. Now, what's the what's the icon there next to the 24? It looks like one of those default GitHub profile pictures. Yep. So, so okay. Yep, I obviously had a commit that was called breaking commit, which is doing exactly what it should be doing, which is beautiful. But you can also see the git blame. So you'll see an icon of, of who who is the offending party or the last person to commit the code. In this case, it was me. So it's telling me that I committed this last. So what's nice about that, if you've got a big team, send it back to that person because they yeah. probably know how to fix it quickly. Okay. So it, now and what you're showing me here and, and where I, I want to jump off into here and it... We, uh, we were tinkering, we were trying to get this set up ahead of time, so we're gonna give this, I, I wanna try to give this a shot. We have the static website for ClipTalk that is only used to serve search engines and to serve bots that query it. So this is literally something that humans don't look at. And it's just a, it's a regular ASP.NET Core website, kind of like what Nico has here. So we're, I, I, I wanna see if we can put it in there because if there's an error, the Google bot isn't going to tell us. Facebook bot isn't going to tell us. <laughs> and it's, it's just going to stop indexing ClipTalk. That's a problem. So I think we're going to have something here that we might be able to just sneak in and, and be able to get working so we can see that it's rendering, rendering those simple pages easy. So, okay, I like that we can get, we, we get the breakpoints. We're going to be able to see what's going on there. And I saw, yeah, GitHub issues right from there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, um, so we don't have to create an issue right now, but let's actually, let's go and fix it. Let's, let's see sure. how that life cycle works if we're fixing it. I, I know how to fix this problem clearly because I created it, which is always useful. Sure. Um, so let's go over here. So, you know, we're just going to make this pretty easy on ourselves. We'll say, look, we don't need any of this. We'll take that out. No. And clearly, we're not going to need this. That's not going to work. So we'll go ahead and, and fix that. So I'm just going to go and commit my code back here. So, okay, so I'm gonna fix my code, which is the right thing to do. And we'll push that into the GitHub repo. Yep. Okay, what's happening in the background? So since I'm using GitHub, I also have GitHub actions hooked up, right? So when I'm committing my fixed code over here, you can see Rollbar's already telling GitHub that I am actually doing a commit it's telling me that I'm also having a deploy happening in Rollbar. So actually what's happening over here is inside of Rollbar, it will actually know that there's a brand new deploy happening as soon as it's ready, right? So that'll start to show up. You can see it's busy. You might run your unit tests. You might mm. be doing deploys. You might be doing all the other things you need to do because you're a good coder and a good tester. Sure. And once that's all done, 
you know, we'll know about that deploy. The other great thing that's happening is as soon as I've done that, I can have a new version of my app. So the, the question often is when I deploy something, when did it start breaking? Right. Yeah, and yeah. this will give you that answer. So imagine you're on a stand up and you're looking at the deploys of the last week. You can see very quickly when things went south, when things really started to break. And I'd give you a sense of where to look, right? Because this is all about saving time of where to look, where to go find something without searching. Yeah. Right? So it's a good way to get to the point. Let me pause you just for one second there. I want to thank our friend Kasukin, who just raided us, brought over 15 of his friends. Thanks so much. Good to see you there. I'm I'm talking to Nico Kruger about Rollbar, and we're we're looking at how Rollbar can help with error logging, error tracking, and and improving our development process. Um, hey, Kasukin, let us know what you were doing over there on your channel. It, so we're, we've been going through looking at the portal here, and in just a few minutes, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna crack open the code for ClipTalk, and we're gonna see if we can we can get Rollbar in here for our static website that the search engines interact with, and see if we can get that logging errors and wired into GitHub, so that we can get some better tracking and handling of of these the headless version of our website. Absolutely, I mean it's it's just making your life easier, which is what Rollbar is about, right? Yeah. And yeah. the other thing is when these errors happen, you don't have to go into the Rollbar UI. If you're using Slack or Teams, like I said, you can just, you'll get a Slack notification, right? It'll pop in uh, to Slack and you can actually view it from there, mark it as resolved or sign it. So your day-to-day -day life is not going to be context switching. It's not going to be jumping out of where you're busy, which is really nice. Okay. So we had our commit. Everything in theory should be working. So what we could typically do is now, you can see in my list view over here, it actually knows that there's a brand new deploy. <coughs> so any new error from this deploy will actually be on top of it, right? So it'll show me the difference in errors by the deploy in my list view as well, which is very okay. useful. Okay. Very, very useful. So what I could do is I can say, look, I can either automatically mark things as resolved if they haven't appeared in 10 days or day, right? So you can set that up in Rollbar, which we recommend. Otherwise, you can manually go and say, look, I actually did resolve it. So life is happy. I'm, I'm good with this. We shouldn't be seeing these problems again. And it'll be gone out of my list. Okay. Which makes your life a lot, lot easier. But again, you can filter by errors, warnings, all that sort of stuff. So, you know, to get to things will be very, very easy. So now if we run it. So theory, uh, hang on. Let me, let, me just, let me just go back. And, because you, you went through that a little bit quickly. And I was keeping an eye on some things here that happened in chat. Thank you, Ava, for the subscription, and I'll make another donation to St. Jude. So we, we saw the code fix. Yep. We had an issue. You close the issue, and it's going to prevent the error from, hopefully, prevent the error from coming back in the future. Right. Okay, cool. Exactly. Now, one of the things, which is a great point, is what if bugs reappear? Because one <clears> of the <throat> things people typically say is, well, how much time are we... Is this a new thing? Have I seen this? Have I solved it before? Yeah. So if that error happens again, if we were to uncomment that code, Rollbar will reactivate the error. Now, if you want to work very smartly, when you fix something in Rollbar, at the bottom, if you're linking it to GitHub or Jira, if you put a comment at the bottom, it tells people how you fixed it. Imagine if you're in a production situation, the error comes up again, and if I click on it at the bottom, it'll show me how it was fixed the previous time. Okay, so so you've you've got my mind spinning now because right one of those problems in chat room I know you've had this problem one of those classic problems that folks have when they're working on a team in source control is gosh Nico you just fixed this but my version of the code I went and I touched something in that area it, it very similar to where you were working and I go to merge my change and you know what I. I I don't include the fit, right? I, I inadvertently don't include the fix that you just put in there. And I, I reintroduce the issue because I merged code wrong, right? Yeah. My gosh, chat room. How many times has this happened to you? Right. And, and never, have to be, never, ever, Jeff, never. Ne <laughs> <laughs> but you've reintroduced the error inadvertently. Exactly. This is yeah. why release engineers are such an important thing. <laughs> yes. We love them. The other thing is, you know, if we have this thing called co-occurring items or okay. similar items. So 
if, like you said, even in another area, if a similar error, because remember, whenever we get the stack trace, we're actually analyzing it, right? We know something about it. So we can actually tell you, hold on a second, we've seen something very similar to this appear. So again, yeah. if you know the fix, you can, you can start to get pretty smart about getting to fixing the problem quickly, which is really nice. Definitely. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing where th this can apply in many different places that, th that I've been writing code with ClipTalk and other applications. Perfect. And the other thing is that I just looked quickly on my deploy. So we know we got the deploys. We're all good. If I go into my deploy, of course, it'll tell me because sometimes a deploy might have many commits in it. So you might have a string of 20 or 30 commits. Um, so you can see all the commits that make up that deploy if it was starting to fail or something bad started to happen. So, you know, that's also quite nice. But the other thing is if you want to get notified, um, you can certainly get notified by setting up the, uh, the notifications in Rollbar. So, for example, I, I just get an email. But if your tool that you use is on this list, you know, you can tell us, okay, you know, whenever it happens the 10th time or the first time, let me know about it. So sure, sure. going from reactive to searching to getting notified instantly, you know, when you're deploying, you don't have to, to worry about it. Rollbar is going to have your back, right? We're going to say we solve a problem. And I'm seeing a bunch of my favorite tools in there, Azure DevOps, Trello. Um, I don't use Slack as much, but um, I see GitLab issues. Are, we already talked about GitHub issues. Being in yep. being in the mix there. What about like I, I like to use Discord with with some of my projects when I'm sharing information. It, Discord we can hook up to with a with a webhook. Is Discord in the list? I I don't think it's in this list. It's but like webhook Teams, is but, right there. Right. So Microsoft Teams is a good example which you don't see in the list. But if you open up Teams and you add an app, search for Rollbar, you will actually find Rollbar as an app. In Teams. Terrific. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So if you don't have it in this list over here, a couple of things you can do. The web looks the easiest. Um, I've typically done things using Zapier or Zapier, whatever you call it. Yeah. Some of those tools where they do the connection for you. IFTTT uh, type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. So that's another way to do it. But it's a great way to get, get notified. The other thing you might be worrying about is, is what if I run something publicly, Jeff, like you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. You've got a TikTok site. You know, your token is in there. For rollbar, could somebody else be sending stuff to me? The answer is no, if you set it up correctly. You can okay. block IP addresses, you can whitelist them. So you can okay. put a lot of security in place so nobody can misuse anything. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Like you've okay. got the options, just configure it properly. Otherwise, <coughs> you can... right. cool. The other thing that's important if you're doing JavaScript specifically, minify JS, mm. that is not that easy to get code context because it's one line of code. It's rather difficult, right? So we can upload uh, the original JavaScript. So if you are debugging that roll bar, we'll go know what the minified version is versus the actual uh, real version of the thing that you're working on in your code. So we'll show you the development version so you can see the line of code with the problem and not the minified version. Okay. Yeah. And we call those source maps. So you can definitely yeah. upload your source maps as well. And we recommend doing that as part of a deploy action. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So life is good. I've got my errors. You can start to see, you can start to see how this is just pretty easy to get into. So yeah, yeah. Can we want to give it a go on that index page? Get your project set up. Yes, definitely. So I'm okay. So let's just talk this through quickly. Let me go back over to the other the other scene, and we can just. Talk through talk through the problem and and how we set up rollbar in here real quick. Okay. So, um, I, I want to I, I want to track errors that come through to the the headless the machine focused instance of ClipTalk. Uh, those of you in chat exclamation point ClipTalk. You can learn more about the website we've been building that makes Twitch clips easier to find. And we we've got now more than two million. Twitch clips indexed on that website that you can search through, like and comment on, and have a good time with. Now, when when the search engines and 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 I mentioned this briefly just a second ago, when the search engines and and the bots come through, like when you share a link on Twitter or on Facebook, they don't know how to crawl the Blazor application. They don't know how to work with that. They know how to work with JavaScript, but 
WebAssembly and Blazor, they don't know how to work with. So what what I want to do, what we did was we put in this, I call it the static web project that just outputs the information appropriate for the crawler so that they can get and format the their content appropriately. But like I was saying, they're never going to report back to us, hey, Fritz, I have a problem with this website. They're just not going to show anything. So this feels like a good way for us to have a machine, have the roll bar machine connecting and managing the output that we're generating for Google and Facebook and all these other machines that are connecting in. So that's this feels like a perfect match to to really have these two pieces connect to each other. Yeah, that's a great way to start. If you've got a, a project you just want to test this on, like a simple HTML page or some front end, maybe it's this ASP, you know, NBC or something like that. Hook it up to one area, you know, one at a time and, and get going because you'll be surprised how sometimes what I've heard clients say is we didn't even know that error happened because you wouldn't know. It, yeah. You, unless you're writing it somewhere, unless you know about the exception. And, and oftentimes what we see with logging tools, they have to have, a, you know, they have to have some set of data to tell you that there was a problem. Uh, with us, we'll know about the problem because we're in the code. Right. Absolutely. Let me, it's my first time. Yeah, I didn't download ClipTalk to this machine yet, so let me just grab the source code real quick, and then I'll jump over there. Uh, C sharp Fritz ClipTalk, and I'm going to create a branch, and uh, we'll, I'll go through all that stuff in just a second. There we go. All right, that's cloning, so we can work locally. Um, I need to keep an eye on Twitch there. <clears throat> All right, let me, let's go to my screen now. There we go. And let me open the source code for this. And I think, let's jump in here. Now there's other areas here that we know we can wire up and if you, and uh, we're just not quite ready to go through and, and tackle yet. And that's okay. I don't, I'm not ready to go through and, and tackle the Azure functions yet, but I think the static web is someplace that we can get in and, and work here and hopefully get productive quickly. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new branch and I'm gonna call this uh, feature rollbar so that I'm on that branch and checked out and working. So, yep, checking out that, good. So here's my startup and garden variety startup, nothing significant in here. Now I need to add, the first step you said was let's bring in those NuGet packages and then we need to create a, a project out on, um, let me move the Solution Explorer. I like my Solution Explorer on the left side. Um, or it's gone all together now. Um, oh no, hang on. It moved up here. There we go. No, oh come on man. Um, I'm Friends, I'm using a tool called uh, Mouse Without Borders and some of these windows are snapping and jumping to the next machine over. So, Okay, this is this is my startup screen. Now you were saying, I should I create the rollbar project first, or start in bringing in the packages for this? Um, typically, what I do is I create my rollbar project, so I have it ready in the back end. Okay. Right. I want that token sitting there, so I'm ready to go once once I'm ready. Okay. If you've got just a standard HTML page, we can just put the JavaScript in there, so we can just do a JavaScript one. But if you want to do dot net one like i did you can absolutely do that okay so let me open a new page in my browser and i'm going to go over to rollbar.com bring that up over there so i'm already logged in i'm logged in with an account jeffrey t fritz so here's my dashboard install package rollbar and it's it's got my id there that i'm going to end up using now the whole id isn't there on screen I'm just going to bring that off screen just for a second so that I can grab the end of it. Grab that whole thing. And I'm going to paste that into my app settings. 
So let me, let me see here. I need to go somewhere where I can hide this. Yeah. I'm going to bring that over there. I'm going to bring Visual Studio off screen for a second while I go and put that into my app settings so I can just grab that key and use it. So I'm creating. Yeah, that's a great example. You don't want to be putting that stuff in your code. So absolutely put it in a uh, place where it's been stored and can be changed. Uh, mm -hmm. So you don't have to recompile an app, redeploy. That's definitely the best practice. So uh, what I've seen people do with things like Terraform, you could actually script and just go update, right? Just that file. Yeah, yeah. So I put it into a location called Rollbar API Key. So it is inside that value. All right, so I have I, I have a project created, right? I'll go back over here. Um, and I should be able to go and start bringing this in now, right? Um, so where was it? For me to bring in install package rollbar. All right, so let's do that. So I'm gonna right click here and manage NuGet packages. I'm going to go browse and go find rollbar. There it is. Install. Um, um, this is, I know what this is. Uh, give me one second. This is me having something misconfigured inside of a local NuGet config here. Friends that have been watching the, the stream, you know that I have packages from our friends at, um, I don't wanna, give me one second here. I'm gonna go back to the interview screen just so that I don't inadvertently show a password on screen because I do that every now and again. And it's it's not fun every time I make that mistake. That's a lot of passwords yeah. to change. Yes. And there, in fact, there it was, it, it, it did, it popped up. Um, it, it popped up right over my visual studio, right where I didn't want it. Thanks. Thanks so much. Um, let me see if I can get that to install. Um, I need to reload one second here close the solution and I have to reopen it. So I have a NuGet config file that has the user ID and password um, sitting in it for uh, for my Telerik, um, my Telerik components. So I'm searching for rollbar again, going to try the install and it should log in and install properly. Did it? No, it's telling me unauthorized. I have the wrong, I have the wrong username in here. Um, oh, you know what? One second, one second. Pardon me here, uh, chat. I need a secrets overlay for entering passwords. You're right. <laughs> I do, but I think this is a little bit more interesting. Um, <clears throat> because I have the passwords over here. Uh, oh, there it is. It did it did log in properly. I did get it right. Uh, I'm just going to confirm this real quick, and then I'll bring you back in and we can look at the code. Yeah, I did have it right. I was right. All right, close that. Um, so here we go. Uh, da, 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 back over to my code. There it is. So I got it installed and it's telling me API depends on system net JSON, but that's fine. It, it resolved a newer version of the code, that's fine. Um, but I've got Rollbar now installed inside my static web. This is a standard ASP.NET Core project. Okay, next steps, now that I have it in there, configure services, I needed to add and set up that, that configure, configuration for how to send out to Rollbar. Um, and, right. uh, okay. Maybe head over back to the, the setup page. You got that roll bar. That's a setup page. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and Lucy's pointing out, um, in chat, um, the chat is anticipating the zero days since I last doxed myself. I'm going to avoid that Lucy. 
Nico's keeping an eye on me here and keeping me honest. There's nothing like coding in front of people, you know. We, the, <laughs> one of the worst sessions I went to to Germany, and, and my surname is a very German surname, and I had to do a presentation. It normally takes an hour. It took me four hours because I had to, you know, we had to get a translator to go from, you know, from English to German, German to English, and back to me. It, it but you know, it's nothing like doing it live. It's nothing Absolutely. Like oh my goodness. Thrill of a chase. All right, so I am. Um... So there's report the error. I need to, well, there's sending a message. I'm not going to send a message. But uh, head down into the SDK introduction. Yep. All right. So what, yeah, what we could do is, okay, so you got. So I've got the package added. All right. And, so, oh, go ahead. Uh, you are good. All right. So what we're going to do is uh, there's a couple of ways. So on the left hand side, so uh, is this a .NET Core project you've got? Yep. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. So that's option one is logging. I typically prefer more option two. Okay. Um, you can pick either one. So that you can see looks similar to my code. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you want to do that, uh, that's one I prefer. Okay. So I'm going to just grab that sample bring it over here and I'm going to just drop in that new method at the bottom. So roll bar access token. So that I'm going to bring in like I had, I stored it in this configuration key right here. So let me, well, you know what? I'm just going to remove that and where it said roll bar access token, I'll put configuration roll bar API key environment equals so let me call this, well, I do have the environment. The environment is actually available to me um, inside of inside of ASP.NET. Um, that could be production. It could be yeah. anything like that. Development. Say, yeah, you definitely want to make it a variable if you can. Right there, there's sure. one thing you've got to worry about. Um, so I'm trying to think. iWebhost environment is is here. Can I get that? here as well so then i can pass into this an i web host environment right so i can change this to just uh right environment name yeah that? um and it's not a constant well tell you what let's just grab this bit of code and i'll replace that like that okay okay so um, i think we're missing one more package uh what are we missing so we are we, yeah you got the using yeah variable. i need the using so the final line that's giving you a bit of the on roll by internal event i would just comment that out what you okay. can do is like i did in my javascript if you uh, if something happens you can, you can actually hook up to other events as well internally mm. um and make things happen for you you can before it's sent to roll by you can do other things with it so i normally just comment that out just get it going so this needs to be done uh up top here so i'll say configure roll bar singleton and i'll pass in that environment that we're now capturing here i think you can do that chat room it, verify for me right i can add extra arguments here that it'll pass in right or do i have to resolve that first i don't remember um I don't remember if you can do that that way or not. So, um, Johnny Most in chat looks like they've used Rollbar before. Rollbar is awesome. Thank you so much. So, hey, Jason, yeah, G can write in configure services in ASP.NET uh, in an ASP.NET Core app. I, can I expand that and put the iWeb host environment as an input parameter to that method? I don't remember if I can expand it like that. And the dependency injection will fill that in or not because I'm. This is doing the dependency injection configuration. Jason says yes. Okay. Right. Every now and again, I need to have have some confirmation from from outside of uh, outside of things here. Um, I need to move some screens around real quick. Uh, give me one second. One second. Um, because I see a message coming in. Oh, okay. That's. Fantastic. Um, I didn't realize you had passed, pasted some information in chat there for me. Let me go back I to that. Yeah, for you to copy and paste. Yeah, there we go. Um, 
So that's where we need to set the some, yeah, just above that code, we can set the logging level. Uh, so if you remember correctly, we can say, hey, we only want to get errors, right? Or, or not. Right. Add roll bar logger. And this we should have. So it doesn't know how to do that yet. Um, and you also have us adding the HTTP context accessor. Uh, services add singleton. Now I'm I'm guessing that's so we can inject and and uh, interact with the request. HTTP context accessor. Okay, and uh, oh, HTTP context accessor. There we go. Um, so add rollbar logger. Yeah, it feels like there's a, another package there we need. Uh, yep, the package we need. Oh, for this method, the package we need is so nougat. It's rollbar.net core net. One more that I use. Yep, rollbar. So let's see, rollbar. There. We go. Second one. Beautiful. Fantastic. Easy enough. Um, yep. Go ahead. Install the things. Yes, I know. And there we go. This, if we do control dot, there we go. Uh, which one is it? Yes, Ace. That one. Beautiful. Okay. And uh, this was setting up now the logger options. Okay. Logger options. Fantastic. So now I can say, uh, right, you had logger options filter, logger name, log level. All right, so it's taking in two arguments and we are going to say, when log level is greater than or equal to uh, extensions logging log level, is it that one? Uh, this should be able to go log level dot error, I think. Let's go log level dot error, I think. I think, uh, yeah. All right, so we've got a, a simple Lambda that's doing a filter there. So I can also filter on the logger name and I can say, oh, well, I don't want to see that logger information kick it out as well there. Okay. Yeah, sometimes when you get a microservice, you want to know when it starts, right? So you can actually write that through rollbar. And what I've seen people, especially if you have a hard to find bug, really, you know, if you want to start writing out some debug and some info messages, just to get some sense of what's going on, it's nice that you can change it, right? Okay. Okay. Jason's got some docs linked for us to verify that, yes, I can do that type of of lookup, fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have the I in configure rollbar singleton. So that looks like all that I need. Okay. So if you scroll down, let's look at your configure. Are you scroll down? I think we need to tell it to use the app dot use. Yeah. So at the end, just go app dot use use rollbar middleware. We should be, yeah, there, there we, we go. go. Yeah, okay. That's what we need. Now that goes at the end after the end point, or do we want to put that somewhere up in here so it's a little bit higher in the chain, in, in the... Um, honestly, I just want to put mine at the end. Oh, okay. <laughs> it probably is probably a right order. There probably is. We'd love to hear if anybody knows if there's a right order for it, but mine I just popped it at the bottom. So. But there's probably a better order for it. Okay, so... It, in the sample, yeah, they put it before, but... Um, yeah. Well, it should be able to. Okay. You know what? I'm going to put it right in here. My thinking is, when I look at the, the flow here, these are the order of things that are processed. So, come through, process static, any static files, and return routing authorization. Hit the middleware. So, if there's an error in the razor page, it comes back through the middleware and, and wow. back up because the processing goes down and then back up. Okay. Got right. it. So save that. So now that's all I needed. I believe um, so. And right. then we just need an error. Do we need an error? Um, so let's do and this. Day, it will be for one day when everything works. Well, we can, we can throw an exception on the index page or something. I'm just going to build to start here. Three succeeded. Good. Um, so let's go through to the index page. And just to make sure that we get an error, I'm just going to throw an exception here. Throw new um, exception, test exception to send to rollbar with Nico. There we go. 
So now we should see that pop up if we do this right. It's a big... If everything correctly, in theory, yes. Uh, would you like me to trust? Yes. Go ahead, trust. Yes, I know. SSL. Here we go. Uh, yes, I, I know. Uh, accept that. So this is Mozilla saying, uh, this is Firefox saying, oh, this is a, and look at that. All right. Um, configure services method must be either parameterless or, or only take I service collection. Yes. Now, Dom's right. We, uh, the, the trick that I tried to pull here didn't quite work. Um, let's do this. Configure roll bar singleton down here. Let's do this. Here's what I'm going to do, right? And this is, th this isn't roll bar. This is, uh, Fritz trying to be a little bit sneaky with passing the environment information around. Um, I'm going to grab that iWeb host environment I was trying to inject. And I'm going to just drop over here and say, um, uh, var provider equals services, um, build service provider so that I get the, the service provider and I'm gonna say var env equals, so I'm gonna create the dependency injection container here and get required service, that I web host environment. So now, right, I'm kind of forcing this um, so that I get the environment and pass that in down here. Okay, now that yeah. should work. So there we go. All right, now, I should hit that exception. There it is. So I threw my exception. Test exception to send a roll bar with Nico. All right, go ahead and let that go through. And and there's my ugly error that I we're creating to make sure we have our configuration run properly. Um, so let me run back over to, there's the docs. Go back, go back. And, oh my gosh. Is this me already? No, this is, uh, I wired this up to stream tools. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. So up items on the left. What did I do? I think we just hooked that up twice, but that's great. You actually have some errors. Yes, select your project. Let's see, it actually did pop in some errors. So I think access tonight. So actually, the project isn't. Okay, this is something that I tried configuring over, over in Stream Tools, I think. Oh. No. Where's it picking that up? But it definitely picked up development. Yeah, this was just a few seconds ago. I think I just called it stream, the project stream tools. Um, but yeah. oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, you've got a MySQL error. Fantastic, access denied for user, okay. Um, what did I do? Um, oh, I've got the wrong password loaded here because I changed password because I inadvertently showed my password on stream. Um, yeah. Why are we avoiding getting it through the constructor? Uh, oh, I could inject iWeb host environment through the startup constructor. All right, hang on. Let me go do that. That sounds better. Um, oh my goodness. Hang on. So instead of doing this, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I like the way that chat's talking about this. iWeb host environment, um, ENV. And this feels like a better... Let me just, and I'll create a variable, a not host environment extensions, host environment, and I'll create a a read only property for that. So then I can just pass host environment right there. Okay. Cool. Thank you, chat room. I feel like that's a that's a good way to do that. Um, a good way to do that interaction. Um. Okay. So the logger is set up and I've got a, I know where that MySQL error is coming from because I did, I changed the password. Um, One thing to note, you are in that example, like we're actually sending the password in clear text. So just a note for people um, that are configuring this, you want to make sure that you try to remove any password fields. So that's, uh, the function is called scrubbing. So we can actually scrub the, so make sure you do that. Uh, again, just to be sure you're on the safe side. Okay, so if I, if I, click into that, it's going to show the password it tried to send. Um, I think the word was just yes, it's trying to send because you can see it on the, the title there. So um, that's just all it was trying to send. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the, the interview layout and I'm going to copy the correct password into my configuration 
and restart here and see what this looks like. So, see that chat room? I'm I'm fixing fixing bugs and things that I didn't even know I had bugs in. Um, that's a problem. Dear Lord. Yeah, one of the problems of seeing it's fast. You're right. Rollbar typically aims for one to three seconds. So. Whenever you're running something, you'll probably know about it before anybody else does. And, and more importantly, before your customer knows about it, right? Before a user knows about it. So it is rather nice. All right. Yeah, there's, uh, that's the API key. I'm going to scroll over here. I see it's the wrong password for that. And close. And all right. Now we can go back to there. Let me restart this and it, it still says it should still say that i'm in development mode there's that test exception i'm going to go back over to there we go roll bar middleware processed uncaught exception and i've got a, a critical here that access denied did not happen again so how do i mark this now as as fixed so if you want uh if you just hover on it on the status column there you go you can mark them as resolved okay uh, and you can pick if it's uh, if we start seeing versions in, you can say, hey, we fix this in whatever version of a code, which is also quite useful. Mm. Uh, again, if something's happening too often, just mute it out. Um, you know, but again, we should probably fix them and not just mute them. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's I mean, so if, if you want to click on any one of those, we should be in theory seeing. Yeah, we're seeing the whole stack trace pretty much coming in. Yeah. Look yeah. at that. Compiler services authorization. There we go. System exception. Test exception sent to roll bar with Nico. Cool. And it's got all the way down through my location, down the line, all the lines and information. So it, I haven't integrated this with GitHub. So this project, there, look at that. Set up source control. Integrate source control with roll bar to view code context, blame, and more. Okay. Yep. Um, do you mind if I set that up real quick? Go ahead. Let's rumble. Okay. So set up, and I, I use regular GitHub with this. Um, connect to GitHub. Look at that. Okay, roll bar requesting permissions. Yes. Um, organization access. No. So one of the questions that people often have is why do we request read write? So for GitHub, the write permission is for issues, right? So if you want to create an issue, we need to be able to post or write to create the issue. So that's why you see the write. Okay. Uh, we only read for the code itself. All right. So we're not changing anything in your code. It's really, if you're using GitHub issues, we do need the right permission. Okay, so should be able to start typing and hopefully we'll C see sharp your... Fritz, there it is. Default branch, I call my default branch main. You don't have to do anything for project root. You're absolutely perfect there. Okay, I'll save that. Settings saved. So now if I go back to the items and Uncaught exception. There it is. If you scroll down a bit. Okay. So if it looks like that, that's okay. Go back to your code. The reason that is not hooking up yet. So if you go back to your startup.cs, if you scroll all the way down where we can figure roll bar, we need to tell it a bit more about it. So if you, um, okay. I think what I had in mind is, where we need to do something like this. And what I'll do is I'll just, so what we need to end up, so if you can go to the configure role bar singleton. Um, yep, got it. We, we wanna go add into the, let me just do this a bit easier. There we go. Uh, there's okay. scrub fields, okay. yeah. Right. So if you go rollbarconfig.server, oh, so you're in that one. Yeah, so I'm running locally. That's okay, yep. So do you have a dot .server? Yep, there it is. So I can say server dot, well, it, it's looking for so it's, it's a, Yeah, so the server is, so go new space rollbar dot Okay. Uh, yeah. Or is there a constructor here we should use? Uh, yeah, so go new rollbar.dtos.server. So instead of just server, go new rollbar.dtos.server. Yep. Yeah, it, it um, right. Uh, dot .dtos, yep, dot .server. 
All right, and then uh, not those brackets, the uh, squiggly ones. And then you can just configure the host. Okay, so yeah, so server. Yep, here we go. So now you'll have host equals. So that should be you should, that should come up. Here you go. Okay, so now we'll have host root and branch. So host, I would imagine yours is just local host, right? Yep. Yeah, beautiful. Root. So that's going to be the path. If you go root, that's the path to where the code is running on your machine. Okay. This instance. So I'm just going to hard code that for right now, just so that yeah. it, it it loads easy. So that is C dev. Uh, clip talk. Uh, it, do I need to go into this project? Uh, clip talk static is, web. Is that GitHub repo has got everything in it, right? Yeah, it does. Yeah, you don't need to go to the project then. You can just go to clip talk. Yeah, you should be good. Okay. Um, and then just tell it the branch. Uh, branch and uh, well, right now it's this one. But we'll need to dynamically load. Uh, we would prefer to dynamically load that at some point in the future. Right. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to send a new error in. So then any new error should pick up this config, um, and then it should appear if we did this correctly. So I'm going to change the exception here to a new argument exception and restart. Right? Was that restart? Yeah, that was restart. Do, 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 do. There we go. New exception hit. And we'll check over here. Um, I should rename the project. Included internal exception processed, and that was actually it picked up the same thing. Have you um, have you finished your breakpoint? It was still waiting at the breakpoint. Um, I, I thought I did a, a reload. I'll try it again. Do, do, do. Hey, Dev0011, I'm doing well. I'm here with Nico, and we're setting up some error logging and handling for uh, for ClipTalk um, using Rollbar. All right, so I've hit that argument exception. Let me head back to here for results. Um, so go back to your code. I had this last night. Okay. So go back to your config in the code. So let's see quickly over here. So where did you set up that server? Okay, so you've got a host. Uh, branch, second, dun, dun, dun. you got your environment name. Is it possible? I haven't pushed this branch out to the production area yet. It, because I'm working, I'm working locally. But it, but it does exist in. I mean, so your at sign in front of root, that's going to do the escaping of those. Yeah, of the backslashes. Yeah. Yeah. At clip talk, just add another backslash at the end of clip. Just make it end with that path. Maybe it's, I uh, shouldn't be, but let's see. That shouldn't be it. So there's the argument. Let me change the exception that it's throwing. Give it, give it a different message. Maybe it's. Um, I think we've done something wrong in our code because I don't think it's actually getting to us. So definitely not getting to Rollbar. Uh, there, ooh, there it was. Oh, here we are. So <laughs> there it is, and history and comments, okay. and system argument exception, most recent call, show project frames, uh, non project frames. Okay. Um, occurrences, there's the occurrences, operating system, the browser that threw it. Um, okay, but that is the middleware piece. If I go to that one, there's the test exception. Cool, first scene, there's the occurrence with level critical because it stopped the application. Right, and you can also set, so if, there's, if you're handling exceptions and you know something is a handled exception, so it's okay, you can mark it as a warning. So you do have the option in Rollbar to say, no, no, no. Oh, network froze. Give it a second. And it wasn't even my good face that. Wasn't even a, <laughs> it was, it's always, <laughs> but there you go. But yeah, you can change the, the level as well. Okay, okay. So let me let me go back to the actual code. I'm going to remove that exception because, well, we want it to actually behave properly. But 
Um, let's let's go over to Solution Explorer. The the pages where I'm I'm really concerned are um, and wait a sec, I'm not seeing. Thinking out loud here. Um, there's a clip page here where it actually shows all the metadata for each one of the clips that we're trying to and uh, trying to show. And it's really just formatting the data that's here. But there is a bit in here where it goes and it says, um, get by row key. But here's, here's where I think we can do some interesting logging. Yes. So I'm doing a return not found. So this is if if we don't have the clip in the clip talk database, I, I think I don't want to just throw return to the um, to the search engine to the machine not found. I, I think like you're saying, I want to raise some very clear exception information for rollbar to to present that says unable to find clip with and this ID so that yeah. I can triage and go through there. So do, should I, should I throw us a, a specific type of exception with that extra information that that roll bar can or or can I can I well, log that error? Maybe inside your if statement instead of throwing an exception because I guess do you want to throw an exception or do we just want to handle it nicely? I want to handle it nicely. It's okay to return not found, but okay. I I do want to send that information. I do want to log the error. So but I think what we do in the if statement. Yeah, we go. So in the if statement, just before return. We'll actually go to Rollbar and you can log out to Rollbar. Okay. Um, what do we want to error? Computer. So it, can I just inject the iLogger and the, the standard uh, iLogger that's used here and pass it through there? Let's give it a go. Okay. So I'm going to receive, like I'm used to doing, I'm going to receive an iLogger here and um let's control dot on that use the extension and i'm going to create an assign property there it is so i have a read only logger property so if i say logger um log error uh, oops right i'm gonna do a little string interpolation here so i can write it a little bit nicely um Unable to find clip with slug. And I'm just going to do that. The the idea of the clip that we were looking up in clip talk database. So now I've got a little bit of useful information that I can work with. Um, and let me restart the application. And we'll try to search for a clip that doesn't exist. We'll look for... A, a bogus clip. So there's what the default web page looks like if you're a machine coming through. So the URL that this listens on is slash clip slash whatever that slug is. So let's go out to the live website real quick so we can get one that actually works so that we can test and make sure it still loads properly before we go and put through something something that doesn't. Um, so we had a, there was a fun clip. I don't know if you saw this the other day. Um, it, I, I got a little startled on stream, Nico. Not going to lie. There it is. Right there. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. So let me copy that link. Yeah. Yeah, that was me. And I'm just going to grab... Um, it's this bit of the URL right there. So Miniature Short Latte Lit Farm. I, I love the names that Twitch puts on these things. So I'm going to go to that... Which, why, hang on, go back, slash, I don't know why it did a search for that, slash clip, slash, there it goes. Okay, unable to resolve, logging iLogger, um, oh, it should be a logger factory, isn't it? One second, one second, I did that wrong, that's on me. Um, I, logger factory, logger factory. Well, the interesting thing is you already have that error in Rollbar. So Are you kidding? I just saw it come in. <laughs> uh, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's call this uh, static web uh, clip as the name of that. I'll restart. It, it logged that error. 
Yeah, I actually show you. Okay, so go into that area. So it'll be the one at the top. Yeah, uh, just grab that one. So if you click on occurrences, uh, that's first, yeah, there it sorry, is. Click, yeah, click on occurrences. I will show you something. So if you go into the occurrence uh, for this one, then if you scroll down a bit, uh, um, so go back, hit back, just click on the, the date value and roll bar. So if you go back. Oh, the date uh, stamp. Okay. Yeah. So if you scroll down, there's going to be a replay command, the curl command. So you'll actually see, there you go. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. So it'll, it'll send me right to that page. This instance is not replayable. No connections were found for. Okay. But if you go back, so imagine this public website, then you'll have access to it. But that's quite nice. So you get all the commands. So you can actually replay this. Um, I do see we have a question there. Is it creating a lot of noise through logs? The answer is no. I know. I think we, I, Chris, I think we're getting some duplicates, but I think that's just in our setup. Yeah. Because um, I think we've got one too many items we're setting up. But no, Rollbar specifically, the, the reason Rollbar exists is to reduce noise. So you should not ever see more noise. And if you see duplicate logs where the AI or machine learning didn't pick it up, you can actually merge them and tell uh, Rollbar that this is one thing. So absolutely, you shouldn't be seeing um, lots of noise. That's, that's really what we try to aim for is to reduce noise. It's, um, it's not responding to me right now, the website. Let me restart this. see what's happening there okay so there's that so slash clip slash and there it is so there's my generated page that it should be creating here cool um right and if i take a look at the at the source here um I, no don't go through that way it's a static page there we go so there's right the description the image that it's presenting um from twitch there's the actual URL for when folks want to click through and, and view it. But there's the Twitch player, right? So when people are on Twitter or whatever, it generates the video player. Cool. Now, right, th that 404 error of file not found, what happens if they go to a clip that doesn't exist? So the title of this clip was Ding Dong. So let's just put that in. And we know that doesn't exist. So I got properly reported... Right. If I reload, I get a 404. Cool. That's that's kind of what we expect. That's good for a machine. Let me go check over on Rollbar. So I'll go back up to the items. Nice. Look at that. Okay. Okay. I like seeing that. Unable to find clip with this ID. So now, so what we could do, uh, if let's say you send in another clip, in theory, sometimes you could get a duplicate uh, log message, which could create noise. The variable itself, we could always just merge these items. And so Rollbar can learn that the, the name of the slug is that's the variable. Oh, right? okay. Okay. I mean, you could reduce noise, but you know, if you want to say, I want unique errors for every video, you could do that as well. But those, those are some of the examples because with our rules engine, you can also start to train Rollbar what you want. Okay. Okay. Right. Because it, at some point, I'll want to grab those data points, right? It, it, if, if we're training it, that it, the name is a variable here. It, would we be able to extract the unique set of names so that I can, I can tell my database administrator, uh, his name is also Jeff Fritz, to, to go and look up and, <laughs> and see well, why aren't these I, here? I, I, yeah, another way you could do it is if you send in the error, say, hey, unable to find clips, you'll have one error, and then you can add a custom attribute in Rollbar, like you have transaction ID, it could be just the slug. Okay. That's another way to do it. So then that actually becomes available in our query language. So then I can actually go find it if I wanted to. So I can go search for the slug. Oh, using nice. Our okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and w where I'm thinking here is I want to... Um, I would also then be able to start from when we start logging data from the front end, I would be able to identify clips that have been removed from Twitch yes. and I'm getting an error trying to, trying to load that image. So right. Coming back to a little bit of what you were saying, some of the front end logging we can do with Rollbar. Hey, there was an error loading this image, log that information. We can triage 
and and put it put an entry in here that says, okay, we need to go and remove these things. The other thing you can do if you want to be really smart is because when that error comes in, you can do an automation rule in Rollbar on a new error when it gets activated or reactivated. And then you can write a script. So you can, with a webhook, tell it to go run a script to go and remove that clip. Okay. Okay. So think of automation things you want to do in the future. Yeah. You can actually, yeah. All right. All right. Um, so the, the 404, that feels like a very useful one to put in here um for logging that this didn't appear can we walk through how to do that with the identifying the variable name in there yeah you can can we walk through that real quick is that is that something we have time for i think so okay Let's see okay so we need to send a custom attribute in the payload yeah. Okay, let's keep going. And I, I see a bunch of folks out there. It, there's links that we've been dropping in chat so you can get more information about Rollbar. Get the, the .NET SDK. Sign up. There's a free trial that, that you can check out and and you can uh, wire it up. Um, it, gosh, we got started. We, we loaded this in. It wasn't even five minutes getting everything set up. Um, it was this guy getting things configured wrong, right? This guy right here. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with how easy this was to do and how we're going to start getting information out of that live environment and thinking, right? Yeah, of course there's a bunch of, is there a way for me to rename the project? Who's that? It's Litany is here. Hello. He's a member of the live coders team. It's interesting. Even though I have that removed, it, it's still... Um, yeah, we'll do that. There we go. Um, so it, I want to rename the project because it's, it's, it's not the stream tools project. Is there a quick rename in here? We can. So if you click on settings on the left and you should be able to go. Yep. Yeah, there uh, it is. Click on, oh, yeah. Uh, there we go. And I'll just call it that. Uh, the Clip Talk Web Application Time Zone. I'm in Eastern, so I'm going to change it to Eastern. Cool. So, I um, and it it's got an indicator here that these are .NET errors that it's repl that it's collecting the error levels here. Um, download. You don't have to worry about that if it's on a phone or anything like that. We'll, we'll pick up a framework automatically, which is nice. So again, you can start to filter about those things and get to the bottom of it quickly. Cool. Okay. Um, so, um, so that'll help me with the 404 there, and I'll have the ability to. Um, well, this isn't, there's no error checking being done here. The, the index page is really just static. Um, what I should do at some point is I should add a page to this, to this static web that does the streamers channel. That's a feature I'm going to have to add in the future. Um, let me put this over here. Um, but that's fine. We, I'll figure that out another time. But I'll be able to get that logging a heck of a lot easier. Um, really what you could do is you could just start to throw data at it, right? And, and Rollbar should just eat that all up. Um, like I said, it should be one to three seconds. But yeah, you can start pulling it into it. And then filtering and searching of that data should become tremendously easier. Okay. Um, so if I were to throw a couple more errors here, have it go to a couple more sites that don't actually exist, uh, a couple more clips that don't exist, right? Uh, Fritz clip isn't here, right? So I get my 404. I really should merge this in with the other browser. So I've got one running. 
There we go. And there it is. It identified, and I've got two separate issues there. Um, now, part of that could be, so you could merge them, but obviously we changed the project name. So what I recommend we do is we mark those as resolve, uh, but you can merge items as well. So actually pick another name. Let's throw another error. Yep. Um, did I, sh I stop? How did I stop the website? How did I stop the website? Ugh. Um, okay, there it is. I want to put it in the same, just move it over here. Right. Is this, I think this is Visual Studio stopping it because I'm merging it in. Oh, you stink. You make me sad. Um, that's fine. I'll keep it in a separate browser. Be that way, Visual Studio. Um, okay. Uh, it wasn't that one. <laughs> this one, get rid of this. Uh, Eagle has a question here in chat. Let me go to that question. Uh, roll bar capture traces across app boundaries where the request started all the way through the API database and back. I think you were talking about this with regards to microservices earlier. Right. So, I mean, if you, any, any, any. Oh, it paused again there with the Skype froze just for a second. Go ahead. Any. It's every time I got to work on my frozen face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to work on that face, but anyway. Um, but yes, so you can capture those. Um, you know, if you have lots of microservices, then you typically would have rollbar on each of those services, and we can capture them. And then you can query and rollbar to understand the flows. But if it's one code base, then absolutely. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem at all. That is that's actually quite common. Um, and it could be, you know, each microservice might have its own set of database. It connects with, so you're right, it could be many databases for each microservice as an example. Uh, so yes, that's not a problem. What you want to do, however, is you want something to help you find the link of issues between these services. So I would have some trace ID or some method so I can query on it. Okay. Yep. Okay. So Fritz, Jeff, what you could do on that, keep on calling you Fritz. That's okay. Uh, I don't know. So you could, if you have lots of logs like this, and you say, look, these are really the same items, you could also merge them, okay. right? So if you, so for example, let's select your uh, top four you've got over there. So you've got, sorry, top uh, three, four. Yeah, let's take the top four. Yep, okay. And you check all of them. On the right-hand side, you hit merge. So what you oh, could do, is okay. you could go ahead and merge these items in. So, okay, we're going to, you know, and maybe change the title where it just says unable to find clip with slug, but take out the actual slug name. Yeah, have it down to just, oh, it froze him just a second. Oh, those in network. Um, okay, unable to find clip, and I, I'm going to change the error. It's not a, it's not an error level, but it's more of a warning that we want to raise. And you can go merge. Uh, I could assign it, if my DBA was here, I could specify, hey, you database person, go take a look at that. Uh, active and merge. Okay. So now this says paused. If I turn that back on. Yeah, you can turn that on if you want. Okay. So I think we marked them as resolved as well. So it should be out of your view. Okay. We marked them as resolved, which I think we did. So if you throw another error, uh, we can certainly see that coming in as well. Okay. So this is one more error. And it did not come through because it's resolved. Well, it should be reappearing. Okay, so you, if you refresh Rollbar, you should see a brand new item. And what we can do is, so we need to obviously train that rule. So um, let's see yours is still refreshing. Oh, you know what? Expand next to the toolbar on the left, expand that hidden toolbar or menu item. Uh, oh, this one right here. Yeah, okay. Critical so error. Down to the left. There we go. All right. So you can see at the top, I actually got in as a new one. So one of the things we need to do is we need to go and modify that rule to make it work correctly. But you can see number 14 is where it actually grouped the items manually. Yeah. And basically, uh, we just need to fix that grouping rule. 
we just make need to make that thing a variable. Uh, I would make it a custom attribute in roll bar, not send it in the title. Mm. Um, that way we can actually group it very, very easily. But then what will happen is everything will go into number 14, so issue number 14. Okay. So, and... and and uh, Joey Zero points out, can't I do logger log warning instead of log error? Uh, yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, but that's a change in my code. For the folks that are triaging, they can set, they can reset the level for that defined, for that here. So the triage and eventually feed that back into the code. Okay. It depends, you know, some people, you're right, if it's infrastructure, it might be critical to them. For us, it might be, okay, you know what, that's not my problem, it's a warning. But you're right, in code, at the point of the error happening, you could set the level, as you mentioned. Um, a couple of really good questions coming in from Eagle. Let me bring these up. And I, the first one here, I think, I, I think you've got a good answer for. Is there any way to throttle errors? A bad person could rank up a big bill for Jeff by intentionally doing a lot of 404 errors. Absolutely. So you can. So the tokens can be rate limited. Um, typically, we want to get as many errors as humanly possible, but you can rate limit them. So you can stop that sort of bad behavior um, where it's just eating up and, and it's the same sort of error. So absolutely. Cool. All right. Um, and the second question Eagle had was, is Rollbar compatible with the open telemetry standard? Good news for you. That is coming very, very soon. That is coming soon. We are looking at that and working on it actively. So right now, no, but it is something that we are looking at and busy working on. So good news is you'll see that very, very soon. Fantastic. Okay. Um, all right. So we wanted to inject, we wanted to introduce a variable. We wanted to, you said, pass it as another bit of information in the, in the log action. Right. In our payload, we can certainly add... Um, you know, some additional information as well. So uh, I'm trying to think over here. Uh, let's quickly see. Right. So we were right here doing log error. So, yeah, if you go, um, well, what we could do is in the roll bar uh, configure, we could add in the payload, we can add a, you know, the movie number, right? So if that's a variable, but if you go to actually go to your code, you could do that in code as well. Okay. Okay, so we're using logger. Um, you part does logger accept anything else? Does it take any other information? It takes a collection of parameters. Um, yeah, so maybe send the slug as that object there, right? So maybe we could use that. I wonder how that'll work. I haven't done that with logger, but maybe we could use that somehow. Let's see if that works. So passing that as an extra argument. Yeah, because normally I do rollbar.configure, and then in the payload, I will add a keyword like uh, session ID or, or whatever. Okay. Um, so clip and um, a new error. So there it is. And go back over. So unable to find clip with slug a new error. And if I click into that, um, similar items, look at that. So it does have them grouped together. Yeah, so it'll find, it definitely knows about it, uh, but what we need to do, we need to get that into. So if you actually, uh, on, this, uh, on the first tab on the screen for the occurrence. So are you on the occurrence screen? Yep. Yep. There we go. Yeah, click on the occurrence. And then, yeah, you see this parameters, all the parameters you can see down there. So if you scroll down a bit, what we basically want to do is uh, in here, we can add whatever we want, right? So we can add, uh, as soon as we send in the error, it could be a custom field. So what I recommend we do is we'll, we add a custom field in there to send it in. Okay. So we'll run out of time today, but what I can do is I can send you, it's in a documentation, but okay. I would take the slug name out of the error like you've got there, so you'd be, it's always grouped automatically and then put it in a custom attribute. The nice thing about putting it in a custom attribute, you could then go and search for how many times a new error was people searched for. So if it may be a popular clip and you want to do something similar again. Yeah. As an example. Oh, very cool. All right. Yeah. That's the way I would do it because then it's easier to search on and filter on and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. 
cool. Very cool. Oh my goodness. Uh, I've I've learned a lot here today. There's, it, I feel like this is going to be a, a a very valuable asset in in triaging and managing how Clip Talk grows, and and certainly um, it, when I get into doing more with the front end because so much happens with the front end application, and and when Blazor support is is made available, yeah. I I definitely want to talk to you, Nico, about getting Rollbar into the mix for logging those Blazor errors because. I mean, our friends who do this with Angular and Vue and and uh, React, they run into this issue of they don't know when clients have an error because right. it, it's in the browser. So I I have that same problem with Blazor. I I don't know. So I'm really looking forward to integrating that, and I'm I'm going to want to talk to you again about how we can get that into the mix here. Yeah, that'll be uh, like I said. I'm looking forward to it. I. Got a bit of a bit inspired by you, and I got my first Blazor app running, and it's all good. Really liked it, but you're right. I would like to know that, you know, in the front end, it didn't crash, but something happened I need to know about, and then I can be a bit more proactive. So, yeah, looking forward to that one as well. I'll, I'll let you know as soon as that one's ready. Fantastic. Hey, we just got raided by our friends at Code It Live, bringing over a bunch of folks. Welcome in, friends. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm talking to Nico from Rollbar, and we're learning about how we can do better error handling inside of inside of our applications and we just finished wiring up some error handling so we better log some of the 404 errors that come through when um, search engines are looking for clips on clip talk easy to do we're going to tune that message a little bit further i'm i want to take a take a a, uh, a step each day i'm on stream and look through my roll bar logs here and make sure that we don't see some ugly errors appearing and and I want to work through at some point I'll, I'll reach out and talk to you offline here how we can start doing a little bit of that with Azure functions because there, there's a bunch happening in Azure functions that would be great to, to log here and be able to see and triage better. Yeah, absolutely. And for those that are using any other of the cloud services, the, the Lambda absolutely supported. Sure. So, you know, because what we're seeing today is most people are just using multiple providers, right? It's sort of a backup and you want to make sure that whatever tool you pick, it actually hopefully works on all these platforms. So you can definitely run rollbar on those uh, other providers as well. Yeah, work across the various clouds. Thank yeah. you so much, Nico. I really appreciate you joining us. I, I understand we have a couple T-shirts to give away. We do indeed. Oh we do indeed. So um, I think it, uh, I have I have our friend Ava sitting in chat here. Um, Ava, what do you say I, I give away five T-shirts today? And uh, I can set up and run that through uh, for a little bit. She says, yes, look at that there in chat. Awesome. Um, it, I don't know if you want to hang around for the for that giveaway, but uh, I oh, can. Absolutely. All right, let me do this. I'm going to open. I run a, a project here. I don't I don't have it installed on this machine. Uh, I'm going to need to go get it. The Lash tools is what I use. These are a set of tools that you can use to... Uh, run a giveaway live on stream, um, and now I've got to download it on the fly here because I, I didn't have it on the local machine. Um, but it runs a raffle. It, it, folks can opt in from chat, and they can, um, they can, with either a, a command or just some keystrokes, they can get in into, um, in, into the giveaway here. And this is taking just a few seconds to download. I might be doing a few things on the network right now, you know, running running a chat with somebody and a Skype call and Twitch stream. Get this downloaded. I should have had this running earlier. My, uh, my apologies. Here we go. Yes, run anyway. And I'll need to log in. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Um, yes, go. Thank you. Um, now, it, some folks may be interested in it, and Eagle kind of touched on this, and I'll, I'll ask this question while I'm getting logged in and configured here. Um, what's pricing look like for, for Rollbar? Are, are you pricing per project, per X number of messages logged? How, how is that handled and, and how do I manage that? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, if you're on a smaller project, you can get going for free. So you don't have to really worry about it. 
And in fact, we're doing some pricing updates in the next week or so. So go have a look at our website. But to start out for free, uh, you can do so. You're limited by the number of events you're sending in. So okay. the number of errors uh, fundamentally is what it's priced at, right? So we don't really care about the number of users. Uh, we don't care how many lines of code, none of that stuff. So you can put all your projects on there. It's really about the occurrence level. So as you start to move up and you have larger and larger projects, you want to pick up some of the plans that give you, you know, if you're going to log a hundred thousand errors or a million a day or whatever your daily sort of run rate is. And you can figure it out, start small. And then what Rollball will do is instead of charging you, um, you know, a bad overage, we'll just automatically upgrade you so you get a better price uh, from the right. So the system actually does that automatically to help control any of those costs. But of course, you can limit it. So that's up to you. But typically, it's a, uh, around occurrence. And you can pick a package that's appropriate. And like I said, start small and then work your way up when you get to like a million, four million errors a day. Again, some of our larger customers are sending millions of errors, right? Every single day. So, oh my goodness. but those are mission critical systems. And, and, you know, therefore you pick some of the enterprise packages. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Let me head back over to, uh, to my screen. I've got the giveaway tool all set up. There it is. Um, if you're in chat, exclamation point here, we'll put your name into the, the participant box there and you could win a t-shirt, a, a roll bar t-shirt that uh, our friend Ava will send out. There you go. Nitro Evil's in the box. No requirement for you to be a subscriber or a follower. Anybody can do this. Exclamation point here. I'll put your name in the box and we're going to give away, we're going to roll this five times and give away a set of t-shirts to various folks from chat that, that are hanging out. I'll, I'll drop a whisper to you and uh, we'll, we'll get your contact information so that we can send out a t-shirt to you from our friends at Roll Bar today. Awesome. Um, there there we go. I see a bunch of folks jumping into the chat. Into, nice. into the, uh, the, the box there. Um, so it, I'm doing this with, with .NET, and we've been talking about the .NET connection team. We'll give folks another minute or two. to. There's a little bit of latency in the broadcast. Um, we've been doing this with .NET and you showed there's integrations with all kinds of other platforms. What's the most popular platform that you see folks using to do logging? The po most popular development platform you're seeing coming through? Uh, uh, we, we see a tremendous amount of Python. Mm. Uh, so some PHP as well. Uh, Java and C Sharp um, are pretty similar okay. as far as volume, but we see a lot of uh, you know Ruby, Python. We see a lot of those uh, at Rollbar. Uh, you know, a lot of the, our initial customers obviously started there, and that's you know the bulk of those. But certainly seeing a bit of a trend at the moment where it seems like C Sharp was was picking up steam, if I can call it that, right? Sure. It seems to be a bit of a bit of a groundswell. I think you know, honestly, just for me, what I've seen in .NET Core and what we're doing, you know, what's happening with Blazor, it's most likely part of that activity. So we're seeing that increasing. But yeah. And Python is exceptionally popular. And of course, your, your plain JavaScript is, I believe, number one or two. Sure. One of the two. It's, it's really popular for those of us just using Bootstrap or, or plain JavaScript apps. And then, of course, React. We're also seeing a, a lot of React, which one could expect. It is quite popular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to give it another 30 seconds, and, and we'll, start, uh, we'll start rolling and see who we can send out some T-shirts to. Um, Robert Tables pointing out a package for Node developers to get nice logs. It, yep. Node wires up as well. We saw that earlier. Um, I I think these types of things, managing it, it, our error logs and triaging and, and automating this as much as possible, really, it, I was trying to say earlier, it helps us get into that manage by exception of our applications. I don't want my operations folks to be constantly looking at logs. I, we we want to get we want to get better at at managing these things, and this feels like a key product that'll get us there faster. Yeah, it's definitely about and also reducing time. I mean, I, I think the the biggest issue these days is just you're trying to write code, you're trying to focus on doing things, and you're spending you know about fifty percent of your time trying to figure out what a bug is, and and that's probably not ideal for most companies. I mean, mm -hmm. it's we want to be writing some good code, so if we can cut you know any time away from finding a bug quickly, that is uh, probably in itself more valuable than anything else, right? Just getting to it quickly. Um, but like, as you said, starting to automate the stuff with feature flags. I mean, you know, honestly, we, we got some customers doing some truly phenomenal things with it, really. As you start to expand 
what you can do with this stuff. It's it's truly amazing. Cool. All right. Yeah. Now, it, it, one thing that that we didn't see, I'm not sure if this is a, a, a current feature, but I didn't see anything that does that, that'll check the performance of the code as it's running, and if something gets suddenly starts running a lot slower, is there anything that's doing performance tracking? So we don't do performance tracking, but one of the things you probably would have seen in the if you open up an icon, it's called a, a service link. So if you're using any other application i think you go back to uh, the item number okay yep we don't have it on yours but if you create a service link you can for example say hey when this error occurred go open up the apm tools so the, the app performance management tools and we can go actually link to that point in time when the error happened so you can see hold on was that more infrastructure we were running out of cycles memory mm. disk whatever it was so we really focus on the code quality and, and the health of the code okay and then we we try to be best of breed, so we'll connect with these. Ah, uh, there went the network briefly. Give it just a second. So you, you'll connect with those other tools so that we can see. Okay, very cool. Exactly. And I definitely need to work on some AI bot to fix my frozen face. <laughs> That's definitely probably a side project. All right, I I think we've we've given folks enough time here. Let's roll and. Uh, Let's give away a couple t-shirts here. Round and round it goes. We're going to give away five of these right now. And we'll pop names out of the, out of the list. So we're going to send our first t-shirt out to... It's so exciting. Oh my gosh, Shy Sharp! There you go. Shy Sharp is our first winner there. Um, let me open up Notepad and just put together a quick list. Shy Sharp, congratulations. You won the first t shirt here. Let me. Um, I'm going to just pop you out of the list here. Uh, Webface. Go ahead, Webface. Do that exclamation point here one more time so we get your name in the box. Just to make sure. Congratulations to you. Um, I'll reach out to get some contact information so we can make sure that we get that sent on its way. Let's run this again. Number two. It's so loud. There we go. Round it goes. When it stops next time, I'll give a few seconds for folks to join in. Um, exclamation point here. While this is paused, we'll get your name in the box and you can win a t-shirt from World Bar. See, it even says it right there. Fire! Look at... Oh, just missed Janescu7. Fire S. Congratulations. And I will reach out to you in just a little bit. So, I'll give just a, a few seconds there for folks. I saw Gaudutis wants to participate. Um, some other folks there. Go ahead, exclamation point here. I'll put your name in the box so you can have a chance to to win one of these t-shirts. There we go. I see a couple more folks popping in. AJ2017, MDE Bruin, CKY, welcome in. Go ahead. You can get your name in the box. You could win a t-shirt just like Shy Sharp and Fire S just did from our friends at Roll Bar, who were showing us all about their very cool error logging and triaging system here today. Make sure you check out, there's a link just below, if you're watching on Twitch, there's a link just below to, to the roll bar um, application. And if you're, if you're watching the recording out there on YouTube, there's a link in the description out to roll bar as well. So you can go check that out, check out the free trial, get started, hook it up real easy to whatever your project is. We even saw mobile applications, not just web applications, desktop applications, and you'll get some, some really cool, um, diagnostic information being output. All right, let's. Uh, I've got th three more of these to give away. Let's go for another one. Here we go. Yeah, there's the. Oh, you know what? I missed the. I cut off the T on that chat log. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, I didn't see that earlier. But we're going to send out SP Tremblay gets our third t-shirt. There we go. Awesome. And I'm going to 
I'm going to pop their name out of the box. And I'll give just a few more seconds here before we roll for the fourth t-shirt. Um, and I'm going to check that timer real quick. How did I, 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 I copy and pasted out of, out of the email from, from our friend Ava there. And I just cut off the first letter. My apologies. There we go. Um, awesome. So, all right. One more. This is our fourth t-shirt we're going to send out. And we'll have one last one after this that we'll send out to our friends. Um, so we'll want to get your t-shirt size. We'll want to make sure to get a mailing address so we can send these out to you. But I want to make sure folks out there in chat, check out that roll bar trial. It was so easy for me to get set up. The, the dashboard, real easy to go through and take a look at. Go deck! Congratulations. Winning our fourth t-shirt. One more t-shirt to go here. I'm going to just pop Godak's name out of the box. Exclamation point here if you're in chat and you want to have a chance to win a t-shirt. Um, I'm just going to play the Jeopardy music so we can count out 30 seconds and see if, if we can get anybody else that, that's interested. Get your name in the box so you can win a t-shirt from our friends at Rollbar. There's Johan. So, um, now... I, I want to run this over the next few weeks and, and uh, we'll reach out and talk to you, Nico, about the various things that, that we can do to add in here. And, and I'll be sure, chat room, to come back and show you as I add more features in here. We'll, we'll do that offline and, and follow up. But I, I definitely feel like this is going to improve quality in Cliptalk quickly. It, it allow us to identify some of these core issues. Um, let's do it. I'm going to start the animation and give away that fifth t-shirt. Um, and Nico, you you were showing me while this is spinning. <clears throat> there's a web hook there. I, I feel like I, I want to drop a web hook into my Discord so we can start seeing some of those error messages pop through. And I'll do a deployment here um, a little bit later so we can get this pushed out. So need a steak. I need a steak too. Congratulations. Oop, there went Nico's camera. There, it's back. Need a steak. Congratulations. You won our final t-shirt that we're giving away today. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, friends. I appreciate you tuning in for for the stream today. Um, but I, I definitely, I, I would love to go and set up the, the GitHub action. I'd love to set up, um, yeah, set up that webhook into Discord and, and, um, it, it we're, we are a little bit over time here. It feels like that's something that we can do offline and I can kind of summarize and show friends next time on stream. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, All right. We've got everything working and it's, uh, hopefully we'll see some of the, uh, the good results coming through and uh, make your life a bit easier. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, I, I definitely feel that way. Thank you so much, Nico, for joining us today. I really appreciate you and Ava from Rollbar joining us and, and showing me how uh, we're going to be able to track these things down a little bit easier with, with the roll bar tools. Absolutely, mate. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm glad and congrats to those who want some t-shirts. Yeah, Keep absolutely. Enjoy them. Awesome. Alrighty. I'll catch you later, Nico. I'm going to wrap things up here and head back over to chat. Oh my goodness. Um, that was phenomenal. I, that was, I, I'm, I'm really thrilled with with how that uh, how that worked out, Rollbar is a clever name. Um, yeah, Shy Sharp, you can whisper to me. The slash W C Sharp Fritz, you can you can absolutely whisper to me. I was going to reach out to uh, each one of these folks with a whisper to a link, so you can fill out a form that that I'll send along to to Nico and Ava at Rollbar, so that they can get in touch with you um, to to send out a T-shirt. When your car has a rollover, you better have a roll bar, says Robert Tables. Yes. You better. <laughs> so we're going to get this video uploaded to, to YouTube um, sooner than later so that you can follow up if you want to go back and see how we set up some of the things here to get the roll bar tools running. Um, I'll, there's links just below here if you're watching on Twitch. There, there's also links in the description if you're watching on YouTube. Um, I want to make sure that everybody has a chance to check this out because... It, the, the problem that the, the error logging problems that we were having with ClipTalk, where it was logging just so much data, 
this feels like it, just with this initial few steps to get this wired in, um, I'm, I'm taking steps on the right path. And, and like I said, I'm going to get these connected with, with some of our friends here so we can see this better next time as, as we start loading through data. Um, a couple stream updates. I will not be broadcasting Fridays. I'm, I'm back to my normal schedule Fridays. I will not be broadcasting, um, Sunday this week. I'm actually going to be in the air flying to Orlando. Travel is open again for me. I will be traveling to Orlando and I'll be in at the dev intersection event next week. So I will not be broadcasting, um, at my normal times next week because I'm going to be broadcasting with Dev Intersection over on Learn TV. I have a session next week. It's on uh, it's on Tuesday at, I believe it's at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. If you're watching Learn TV, um, aka.ms slash Learn TV, I'm going to be talking about um, Blazor components and how to build Blazor components, how to reuse code in Blazor. That session will be broadcast live from Orlando on Learn TV. Make sure you check that out if, if you want to see more about that. I'm going to see if I can get back online Thursday morning. I'm not quite sure about my schedule. I need to check into that. But I, I will not be broadcasting live at my normal time again until next Sunday. So I've got a little bit of time here to, to connect and make sure that, that I'm working with Rollbar correctly and we've got it wired up in all the places um, inside of our Azure functions appropriately for, for Clip Talk. We hit 2 million videos on Clip Talk the, uh, earlier this week. Huge, huge um, benefit there. Am I going to be broadcasting this Sunday in the evening? Um, if, I, if I do, it would be from my hotel room in Vegas. I'm not going to say no in, in Vegas, in Orlando. I'm not in Vegas this time. Vegas is in December. Um, it would be from the hotel room in Orlando. Let me see. Let me see what's going on there. Next week... I don't know. Let me, I, I will get that information locked down and posted for next week. But th I want to make sure that I thank everybody and, and wrap up here because we, we added, we did a lot. Uh, we learned a lot about Rollbar today. Big thanks to our sponsors, Rollbar today. Thank you to Nico. Thank you to Ava in the background in chat, helping us out and, and coordinating and setting up some t-shirts we can send out to our friends. Um, thanks to our raids earlier today from Kasukin and from uh, Code It Live. Much appreciate the raids. Uh, thank you to everybody that followed all our new subscribers earlier today. All the cheers, all of our subscriptions and cheers. This month, we're continuing to donate to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. All right, friends. Let's take a look and see who else is streaming out on the big Twitch TV network. Who we can raid, who we can and send along the love to. Um, I have... I have some other things that I need to get to today. We're putting together a ton of great material for Blazor this month on the Microsoft uh, Microsoft Developer Channel, Learn TV on Visual Studio Channel, and I want to make sure you have a chance to see all of that information as as I'm going through and building that up. Is Visual Studio live? It, are they live? Is that them right there? They are. Um, it's the Visual Studio Code Show. They're talking about the cool new things happening with Visual Studio Code. So let's raid the Visual Studio channel and, and go visit them. Thank you so much again, everybody, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. This video will be available available tomorrow on the YouTube channel. I have to give it a day here. That Twitch won't let me publish these things right away, but it will be available tomorrow over there so you can check it out. Make sure you check out Rollbar for me. And uh, I'll be sending messages out to our t-shirt winners in just a few minutes so that we can get in touch and, uh, and get you your t-shirts. All right, get ready to say hi to my friends from Visual Studio Code on the Visual Studio channel, and I will see you... Where's my button? Where's my button? Um, I'll, I'll try and see you on Sunday. If not, I'll see you on Tuesday on Learn TV, direct from Orlando, talking about Blazor. Take care.